you have caused confusion and delay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Deepest Law. And we're on time. Of course we're on time because we're all very useful YouTubers, aren't we? Uh, hello, Mr. D. How are you doing this week? Hello! <laughs> How are you doing? I am a very useful, uh, very useful uh, sidekick, yes. And, uh, and time stealer of Mrs. AA Credits fame. Uh, welcome, sir. Oh, I am happy to be here. Also, AA pronounced credits. You, 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 the, how did you say time stealer? It sounded very sleazy the way you. <laughs> so it's like, like really grimy like time stealer. <laughs> um, well, welcome, um, everybody. And um, we are here, gathered here to talk about Thomas, Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, and we're going to talk about this seriously and give it some proper analysis. I've been doing a review of um, the the kind of Thomas the Tank community that exists on YouTube, which is more sizable than you might imagine. Mm. The Unlucky Tug is only the tip of the iceberg. There are, <laughs> uh, let's say, lesser channels um, that also are devoted to Thomas the Tank. And I've got let's just say criticisms of that community in general. Um, they seem to lack, um, for lack of a better word, any British voices for one. Um, it, it seems to be overwhelmingly dominated by Americans, uh, which is a problem. Would you not agree for when you're dealing with Thomas the Tank? Because um, one is the essential Britishness of the show. And the second thing is um, that they of course had uh, they had their own narrators and, you know, part of the, you know, huge part of Thomas is Ringo, isn't it? Um, um, and, and the Michael Anglis. So that that's one issue I've got. Another issue is that um, they sp they seem to spend almost all of their time focusing on the CG ones and basically moaning that the CG ones are rubbish. I mean, the CG they, one is just immoral. It's the absolute. Yes. Action. Really? But rather than providing actual analysis of the original series, they tend to just criticize, you know, relentlessly the, the modern product, if that makes any sense. Um, which reminds me a little bit of the old of the old wrestling community who just like watch <laughs> war in a in your week in, week out, moaning about how it's not as good as like the mid nineties or whatever. Um, well, it's, it's like the, it's like the two thousand sort of two thousand seventeen sort of youtube skeptic thing you know just just moan about moan about the 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 the, the, S, the miserable sjw's and don't don't talk about anything yeah. else you know? are you, are you so, trying to say that talking about the cg is like their equivalent of dunking on feminists like red-haired feminists just, <laughs> I don't know, easy that's, dunks, that's, you know? <laughs> it, it, it seems like that's all that's all they do is complain is complain yeah. about the modern series and and you know t if you actually try to find analysis of original thomas or anything you know, you don't really get anything. And I, I've also f discovered a, a few strange quirks about that community, which uh, we might tease out as we as we do our deep dive on uh, on Thomas here. Um, but one of the things is that they don't like Thomas. Uh, Thomas, the tank engine himself, is despised by the fan community, which is news to me. Um, what? You, well, you see, you've got to remember... Is is this the true fans we're talking about here? I feel well, like these are a bunch of Johnny Come Lately Americans yeah, who vulgarized it. I That's, mean the the, the source of their the source of their animus uh, with Thomas is that he is very very overrepresented in the recent seasons, mm. and um, you only get like the occasional cameo from Henry, say, or Percy, um, whereas Thomas is inserted into absolutely everything. So. They resent him for being like stuck down their throats when mm. other characters are less used. You know that's kind of the reason. Um, well, I, I, I'm going to present my my theory about the, the show, which is uh, if you remember our um, deepest law Muppet stream, um, yes. I set the death of Jim Henson as basically the end, the hard end of the the real Muppetry. You know. And I, mm -hmm. um, for me, um, season, the end of season seven with the departure of, uh, well, actually the death of 
uh, or the departure of David Mitten mm. and um, the original producers of the show, uh, I sort of set season seven as the last proper series of Thomas the Tank Engine. I have not watched anything past season seven, and I certainly would not watch uh, the CGI. So my consideration and my sort of um, thoughts about the show are all kind of confer- uh, confined to the first seven series. Yeah, I, I have to concur with Mr. D. Uh, when they were bought by Hit Entertainment, um, Brit Allcroft's company was bought by Hit Entertainment, and that seems to have been the beginning of the end, and yeah. it almost follows this cycle of this weird relationship that Britain and America have, especially when it comes to media, where the Americans get into it because they love the quaint Britishness of it, which Thomas is incredibly quaint and incredibly British. And then eventually it gets acquired by an American company that then forgets that the appeal was the quaint Britishness. And then, frankly, it, it turns globo homo and, and they, they vulgarise everything and yeah. it, everything goes I to mean, shit. That's basically I what wa- happened. I watched the video just now. I'm not going to play it because it uh, seems like these guys are very hot on their copyrights. So but... Um, it's a uh, meet the steam team, oh. right? um, <laughs> and it was the it's the modern introduction to the character of Gordon, and Thomas is this yapping American, over enthusiastic. Oh. I mean, he reminds me a little bit of like Sonic the Hedgehog or someone like that. You know, really irritating, and to- and Gordon has none of it. Like, I mean, they've they've just transformed these characters to being nothing like the characters that we know and love. So yeah. for the purposes of this stream, we're going to act like it ends at the end of season series seven. Um, and I mean, in my opinion, there's even within the series one to seven kind of after about season five, I feel like we may be yeah. um, something seems to change in the show. I can explain why that yeah. is because I actually read. I mean, I read them a long time ago. I read the original Railway series books again Railway in preparation series, yes. for this stream. And the first two seasons are basically all uh, adoptions of the original stories. And unlike the modern world, they adapted them pretty much word for word, which is unheard of these days. Um, they did cut a few things out here and there, but they have basically word for word adaptions of the books and that's why the first couple of seasons are just fantastic and also based from our standpoint mm. because you're basically they were written by a high anglican reaction <laughs> essentially i mean so, it's just something i wanted to get into over there i mean i have prepared um i've prepared a few slides and have uh, you now <laughs> time stealer has um has uh, picked out lots of images that we can that we might be able to refer to um, over the course of this. But you've got a folder called Intro Time Stealer. Yeah. There's Shall just a few I... images in there that you should just start with, just to get people a bit warmed up, you know, and just okay, to get so people warmed up. Let's have a look at Intro and uh, see where this takes us. So here we've just got a meme. You, of course, confusion and delay. Um, do you know I've been winding Mrs. A up all week, Time Stealer? <laughs> <laughs> I've, become ad- I've become addicted to saying this, uh, you know, oh. all the time. Um, and uh, she can't, you know, she's starting to get a bit wound up now. <laughs> you want to know something really funny sorry, about sorry. this particular meme? Go, go on, Mr. D. Well, I was just going to say, uh, say I watched, I rewatched several times uh, before the stream, before the stream. And he does, the, the fact controller doesn't actually say confusion and delay until like much later on. Like, as far as I recall, he doesn't actually say those two words in conjunction until, like, season, like, series, like, four or five. Um, Are you suggesting that this is one of those things, like, beam me up, Scotty, that everybody just imagines? Like, well, it became, and so, of course, it, it, I'm, I'm, you know, the, later on, I, I would say it's probably season five, six. I mean, he says it a lot, and it, it's, yeah. it's clear that it, it's become his kind of catchphrase. But I don't recall, certainly in the first three series at least, him saying those words at all. I think together those words are probably the best addition that uh, the, the, the the TV people, Brit Allcroft Company, etc., did. Because I don't seem to recall reading that in the books either. Maybe it was in there once, and they just thought that's got a good ring to it. 
but anyway, this particular what we're looking at here, by the way, is a piece of high period deep law art from about three years ago, <laughs> like two oh, or three wow. years ago. Wow. Yeah, I, I remembered I'd created it a long time ago um, on like the second deep law Discord. You know when we used to have the law review. This yeah. was uh, this was from back in the day, right then. So it's so, 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 have you been you... around that long time? Since, oh yes, yeah, so I've been around. I, I, I mean, I remember yeah. Mrs. AA intoning your your name, but yeah, yeah, it's I've amazing. been around. When, you, when your memes long. become dreams, eh? Yeah, <laughs> I know it's <laughs> come full circle. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, one other thing. I mean, we'll we'll talk about each of the characters in turn soon. But one of the things I'm enjoying about the Fat Controller is that his, as time goes on, he becomes more clipped more kind of um you know <laughs> we are putting on a very important event you must be on time goodbye <laughs> he becomes more and more like that as time goes on i, I find yeah more, um, more jowly more northern yes you <laughs> have michael angelus does p- portray him as being very northern pilled y- yes <laughs> and, 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 and 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 like yeah. progressively each like after Michelangelo's g- it comes in, like every series, he becomes more and more. He becomes more sort of jowly and more northern. I- I've noticed. I noticed. Well, yeah. One of the things I, because obviously I've been watching them with tri- AAA, and then I had to accelerate my watching this morning to to get up to speed, so to speak. Um, but uh, one of the things that when Angus comes in in series three, um, replacing Ringo Starr. I, it's it's a bit of a job because Anglis' is a voice is is much higher pitched than Ringo's, and he's much more scouse. He's yeah, much more like Angelus he's much is... more of a kind of um, Harry Enfield style scouser. Um, and so all the characters are a lot more sing song than when you know Ringo in his much more kind of dulcet tones. But the Fat Controller is a real point of continuity. I thought you see they. Angus's fat controller sounds a lot like Ringo's initially, at least, and then he becomes more northern as time goes on. Um, Did you watch that yeah. YouTube video I sent you, AA, with the um, the interview with Ringo Starr and the Reverend W. Audrey on sort of like Saturday morning TV in the eighties when the, before the wow. first season came out? It was no, really I... bizarre. It was so. I have weird. Uh, I, have, I, I didn't quite catch that. What's the uh, what's the gist it, of it? It's basically they're doing the usual sort of promo stuff for the show. And it's like on the on the one hand, on the so there's like this sort of typical eighties, you know, very chipper lady presenting it. And then you've got on the sofa, you've got Ringo, and next to him there's the Reverend W. Audrey. And it's just <laughs> the man who is responsible in part for the sixties and the beginning of the ashes, next to this very religious reactionary man who's just, it's just such a bizarre juxtaposition. Yeah, I mean one of the things that's become very clear to me is, and um, and this is going to be a theme as we as we go through. Here's the Reverend. Um, there he is. Is that um, you know we were talking about this a, a little bit earlier, D, weren't we? How so, say with Postman Pat as an example, okay? Postman Pat, Pat, I would say, is reactionary by accident. Yeah, you know, it's just showing like village life, which you know, in the context of 2021, looks reactionary. Whereas I would say Thomas, Thomas and Friends, the TV show and the and and indeed the books they were based on, are reactionary by design. I mean, it's part of their DNA that their mm-hmm. view of the world is reactionary. It's the text itself is reactionary. Would you agree yes. with that, Time Stealer? But yeah, because he he, he was. I, he might not have described himself as such, but he certainly was a reactionary to some degree and a traditionalist. And, uh, you know, obviously he's a, he's a reverend, so he would be a devout Anglican as well. So, yeah, I mean, he, he was he was he was a type of Anglican. He, he was not the, the sort of contemporary Anglican that you think of. I mean, he was, yes, the, very much the, the sort of traditional high Anglican. So, yes, uh, like modern as far as I can tell. I looked into just... him a bit, and I, I didn't find any sort of specific reactionary thing. But yes, I think um, A is absolutely right. I mean, there is it, it's baked into the show. I mean, that just the, the the absolute foundation of this, unlike something like Sam Fireman Sam or Postman Pat or you know uh, uh, these other shows we talked about, uh, yeah. ex- 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 excepting perhaps like Trumpton and Camberwood Green and all those, but. Yeah, I mean, Trumpton and Camberwick uh, Green, I would say, 
were throwback when they were made. Um, but if you think about Thomas, Thomas, Thomas and Friends, the TV show comes out in what, 1984? 84, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the world it depicts in 1984 is obvious. I mean, we're looking at the world really of the early 1950s at the absolute latest, I would say. Yeah. And you can tell because the characters are wearing hats and, yeah. you know, um, it's a, you know, it's a, very, it's a kind of hierarchical uh, social order. Um, everybody, uh, you know, lives for work as we, as we <laughs> talk about, you know, in a way that uh, some people may even find disturbing in, um, in the modern context. Um, and there's also this, strong streak running through the show that nobody should get too big for their boots. Mm. Um, I think if there's one moral to take from Thomas the Tank, don't start getting smug. Don't start getting too full of yourself because... No, you're your place pulled, is a great shame yeah, of being. Yeah, exactly. You're going to get yeah. pulled down. And, even uh, I mean, even yeah. the fat controller, uh, that even applies to him, uh, as we, we perhaps we'll get into later. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, would, in fact, in fact like... the, the, the fact control. The one thing I will say about uh, series five is that it adds a little bit of, um, uh, adds a kind of interesting bits of character context to fact controller. But we'll talk about that soon. Yeah. Time, time I would soon. like to point out that uh, I think he invented the stories during the Second World War to tell his son, who was sick with mumps or measles or some such thing, and the first one was published in 1945. <laughs> And obviously at that time, because they couldn't publish it during the war because there was a war and everything was shit. So, but then he published a book a year after that, more or less a book a year until about the early 70s. And the books mirrored the events that were going on in the real world on what they called the other railway at that time. And that's where some of the reactionary stuff comes in. I, I yeah, would I mean, say. a lot of these steam engines were built, you know, based on, you know, trains from the 1920s. Um yeah. I think Edward is is based on a train from like 1896 or something ridiculous. Like that. Yeah, Edward. Um, Edward, I think, is one of the oldest of of the big engines. Uh, the the narrow gauge engines are quite uh, like even older than that. But yeah, I think Edward um, is a bit odd. I mean, I wondered about that time stealer because I feel that the timeline of the show is quite ambiguous. Like, when is this actually happening? Because to me, it seems like the Fat Controller is alive far longer than he should be <laughs> you know be, well, that, like there's a suggestion that he's he's alive in the in the 20s and in the 50s and in the 60s and I'm this not is sure. a bit of a, a problem with the show compared to the books because clearly the reverend was quite the autist because he had all this thought out and actually in the canon of the railway series books there's actually three fat controllers and each one is the son of the previous one and when the father dies, they, they inherit the baronet. Because the fat controller is a baronet, by the way. I don't know if, if you're aware of that. Oh, he's, not... he's a baronet. I didn't know he yeah. had I didn't know he had a heritable title. I thought he yes. was just I thought he's he was not just a, a knight noble. of the realm. He's above the knight of the realm. So he's a baronet. Yes. yes. Yeah, he's got a he's got an he's got a heritable title. I, I did so not know that. In, within the canon, there's three Sir Topham hats, and one controls until about 56, and then one controls from 56 until some point in the 90s. And then after 1997, the railway becomes privatized again, just like in real life as well. <laughs> the Isle of Sodor oh, goes God. back to be private property because it was technically nationalized in 48, like the rest of the railway. Right. Uh, which is the one unbased moment in the entire thing where they allowed themselves to be nationalized, which was a bit, you know, what, what can you do? Yeah. So, um, in fact, and, and I, I actually think that the TV series Fat Controller is a, maybe a bit different from the book Fat Controller. I know he's got uh, a different name because I think he's called Bertram or something in the books, but uh, he's got a different name in the, what's his name? Bertram, Bertram was one of the engines, um, the narrow gauge engines name? they find, but he's named after someone who I can't quite remember off the top of my head. But in the TV series, it, it seems to be clearly stuck in the 50s and the 60s. They never really go beyond the 60s in the TV, which is odd. Yeah, so, so, so in, the, in the books, he's called Sir Charles Topham Hatt, Sir Stephen Topham Hatt. Whereas in, um, in Thomas and Friends, he's only ever called Sir Bertram Topham Hatt. So he's a, he's a different man. 
you know, a different. And I've got a f feeling um, that um, his backstory may be a bit different because they, they, they give him that strong northern accent. And he's, I don't know if you ever read any kind of 1930s industrial uh, drama. I, I don't know why anybody would, but something like Hindal Wakes or, um, uh, you know, that, that there was a kind of tradition of like, you know, Manchester industrialists and um, aspects of the fat controller seem like, seem a bit like that to me where he's like, a, that he's new money and, um, and he, he does uh, have Mrs. Hat, Lady Hat is a, is a kind of an aristocrat. He, he does, like, he does have a bit of a the James Williamson about him, who was the, uh, the the linoleum baron in Lancaster, and he just owned that entire city, and he was just, but he came from relatively humble beginnings. Uh, so, so you've picked out some of the the leftist articles we talked about. Oh, but, uh, he triggers leftists. They they don't no. like it. They they don't like it up. They really don't. <laughs> They're not big fans. <laughs> well, the funny thing about the leftist reactions that I've seen is that they, they, they really can't seem to place w like exactly what it is that they don't like about the show. I mean, one of the things that I think is quite interesting about it is that just talking to people, um, there seems to be just a natural kind of, I would say, reactionary evolution that comes from people who kind of, boys and men. I, I would suggest that this show, even though you know, you certainly wouldn't make a hard distinction. But I would say that most of the people who like this show and like the books would be boys. Uh, is, is that is that controversial? Oh, I mean, yeah. It, it, it does seem that trains in general and mechanical things, really, if we're yeah. being honest. It, it is really more of a boys thing, and I would, I would, I would agree. Uh, yeah, and I, I think that, the, that there is... Um, again, there is something deeply sort of spiritually reactionary about the show or about the books or both that, that, that then kind of carries through from people who watched it at an early age. I mean, I was, I was 10 or 11 years old when the first uh, series came out, so I was exposed to it you know, fairly late. But, uh, but it, it does seem curious to me that, that the kind of the leftists it seems that they kind of they 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 just intuitively don't like it but they can't I mean, look, really look articulate what, why look at what she says she says the repressive authoritarian soul of thomas the tank engine and friends <clears throat> wilbert audrey created thomas the tank engine disliked change uh, venerated order and crave the administration of punishment. Based. <laughs> I um, fail to see the problem here. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, the not so hidden subtext of the popular children's so show, Thomas the Imperialist Tank Engine. Oh, for Christ's sake. Something about Thomas and Friends gives liberal parents the creeps. Yeah, something. What? What? But they don't ever say like really what that is. Like, what is the imperialist uh, bent? I mean, they can't really define it. I, I think that's very curious. That Thomas, there is something undefinably uh, irritating charge, to these people. There's a charge that Thomas is anti-Semitic <laughs> and that Shordo is a fascist paradise. What? Oh, God's I mean, sake! So I mean. Bit. Um, here's, uh, here's, you've got the king at the top of the, the hierarchy. I mean, clearly, um, there is something about, uh, the fat controller that is, I mean, I would compare him to, to, to Mussolini in a way, you know, caught between tradition and, and modernity, but, um, he's clearly right at the top of the hierarchy of Sodor. We'd all agree with that, right? I, I, mean, I would not agree. I would not agree with that. I'm going to step in here. Go I'm going to have a very unpopular, I'm going to have a very unpopular opinion about uh, about the fat controller there is a queen and so the queen of i i would have I mean, it, it clearly the the way the figure looked it was clearly modeled on elizabeth the first i mean elizabeth the second yes. a, a, a current monarch but there is a queen of wherever whatever dominion that sodor is part of um 
And so the Fat Controller is not at the top of the hierarchy. This, uh, this image more refers to the island of Sodor and the railway rather than... It's more of a king in the metaphorical sense. He's, he's like the car king. The, the, the Fat Controller is the car king, but he's not... Uh, yeah. like, He's not he AA self-insert. To, to me, like I think I think he is a I think he is he is an industrialist and a merchant class, but he isn't an aristocrat. I mean, in, in fact, there is even in the narrow gauge when the narrow gauge stories uh, appear in the fourth series, um, there's reference to the to a duke of Sodor. Um, in fact, yes. the engine Grandpuff Duke. Is named after the Duke of Sodor, so there is an there is an aristocracy above the mere. Oh, merchant. there most certainly is. Yes, yeah. it's this. This is more referring to the operation of the rail. It's a very abstract idea. It's like a the railway is yeah. like a microcosm. It's I mean, not, he's very like... in the world of Thomas and his friends. The Fat Controller is the king. Yes, and I mean, he, you're right. He he's very much like the. Um, you know how Thomas Carlyle talks about the, the captains of industry mm -hmm. taking their role as a kind of benevolent dictator within, you know, within the factory town. Um, it's almost like the fat controller is living that. You know, I would compare him to Henry Ford or, um, you know, some of those, you know, Bourneville, Cadbury, you know, some of these sorts of characters who precisely who try to live up to the Carlylean ideal of like, right, we. Yeah. You know, I'm not just an industrialist. I'm going to take my role. Because the thing about the Fat Controller is that he's strict, right? He's strict. But he says at one point, which it really struck me as a poignant line, he said, don't worry about that. As long as I'm in charge here, you're not going to get scrapped. I'm not yeah. going to get rid of the steam engines. So he is, he does have a kind of an agenda where he, where he keeps on assuring the engines that they're not going to be scrapped and mm. you know he's not going to replace them with buses or with there's something you know, very diesel. patriarchal about the fat controller he's in 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 paternal you might say as well just in that he has the air of the i would say there was something quite trumpian about him but in reality there's something quite top and hattian about trump it's just it's, yeah. it's, i mean that's not a fair I, comparison to top and fat <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he, he isn't, a, you know, he, he is very dichotomous as a character because he isn't, he is not just a rapacious industrialist. I mean, he does seem to have a clear romantic streak and he makes various choices through in, in, in various episodes of the show that are against a financial interest, I would say. In fact, he, he loses money and he loses efficiency by his various choices in, in, in like AA set to, to keep the steam engines. I mean, he, it, it's odd because he brings in innovation. I mean, he brings in diesel engines, he brings in lorries, you know, he brings in various, various sort of modernities in terms of technology, but then they basically, he brings them in and they prove that they're like averse to this world. And then they're, they're cast out again. So he is a very strange character because he isn't solely motivated by money or by financial I mean, gain. She might, I'm going to make a very strange analogy, but um, she reminds me a little bit of uh, Sir Alex Ferguson in the way that he used to <laughs> run Manchester United. Right? It's a very strange, well, it's a strange analogy. But I, I remember reading Alex Ferguson's autobiography and he would rather have a kind of gritty northern lad who didn't have the top skill in the world, but, you know, wanted to give it his all, like a Nicky Butt character, over, like, a Ronaldinho, who was one of the best players in the world, but was lazy, you know? So, I mean, to, to make an analogy, why would anybody in Fat Controller's position employ Toby, right? Old, out of date, you know, slow. Um, but... You know, you can see the value in him. He's got a good, he's got a good mind for goods. He's he's experienced, and he gives it his all. He's got the right attitude. So he's, he's also a specialist. He assesses the engines on their character, as just as Alex Ferguson used to assess players on their character, as well as just their skills. Because otherwise, you'd replace the entire fleet with diesels, wouldn't you? Um, but he's not willing there to is, do that. There is yeah. one point worth mentioning here, though. And D kind of touched on it. At the time when the books were written, things like diesels and even, you know, lorries and stuff, they were not as reliable. Mm. 
they, they they think they just didn't work as well as they do now because they were newer technology. So that that is the genuine. The steam engine is very labor intensive, but it is a very reliable and tried and tested means of haulage. And, and say reliable and and uh, say reliable that many of these engines are still operational. I mean, there are literally a- engines from the 1860s in Wales that that still function. There's a there's a a famous narrow gauge um, uh, preserved railway uh, north of Aberystwyth. Um, the telephone. That, yes, that 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 still functions with trains. I mean, with engines from the nineteenth century. Say, so, I mean, y- you know, say what you will, but I mean, there there aren't many diesel engines <laughs> that kind of survive in the way that steam engines do. No, I did have a go at making my own my own hierarchy. Um... Uh, time stealer. I, I, I've shared this before. Yes, but um, I, like within the world of, of Thomas and his friends, it seems to me that the ultimate, the ultimate thing that that an engine can get is a new coat of paint. Um, I mean, I just watched an episode this morning where Percy gets a new coat of green paint and he's like over the moon with it. <laughs> the second, the second thing that you can do. <laughs> Is to is to impress the fat controller sufficiently that he says that you're really useful. If you can get the fat controller to say yeah. you're a really useful engine, that's like the affirmation. And then there are jobs on the line. You know, obviously the express is the you know Gordon's job is the absolute top line. Um, then any other job on the main line, you know, whether it's the. I was trying to work this out. Does James pull a kind of slow passenger service that isn't the express train and does henry run a, another passenger service or does henry literally only do the flying kipper which is the the transport you know because i was trying to work out the economy of sodor and yeah. um it, it's kind of roughly divided between china clay fish uh what else do they sodor has an incredibly diverse economy which tells yeah. you that the people in charge know what they're doing yeah, yeah i mean but it's it's fit. I mean, Henry takes the fish on the flying kipper. Um, there's China clay from the quarry that is taken yeah. down to the to the docks down there on the Brendan branch. Um, uh, what else do they export they have down a, there? They have a stone quarry. That's where yeah, they have a stone quarry. They they also do slate, uh, as far as yes. I can recall. Uh, the narrow gauge engines de- definitely haul slate. Um, yeah, so... I mean, I was, I was trying to work out. Um, you know, who's responsible for which bits of the economy. You know, as much praise as Gordon gets, and as much as Henry is, um, you know, proud of the flying kipper, pretty much Percy does, like, you know, 65, 70% of the whole economy. It's, it's just this per- is, per- Percy runs the island, basically. This is one of my, the times where knowing a bit about the real world railway comes in handy, because in reality, freight was the main money earner for the railways until relatively recently the passenger side of things was flashy like gordon you know it's flashy it's all good for pr but in reality just some yep. filthy thing calling about 50 but coal wagons was the source if of i was working out the per unit kind of productivity of each of the i mean i think percy could justify being the top earner on the, on the i mean the work <laughs> that lad puts in so i would say i would say jay uh, so as far as i remember i mean i remember the the fat controller te- saying to James that he was he was very useful as both a kind of mixed use engine that he could both haul um, he could haul freight he, you know he could push the trucks uh, and he could also do passenger uh, uh, car- carriages in, yeah. in a pinch um, and and Henry as well I mean the only one of the the only one of the engines who doesn't seem to be even though he's forced to do it on occasion, but the only one who doesn't seem to want to be involved at all with anything other than passengers is Gordon. You know, I mean, G- Gordon won't even do mail. Gordon's like, <laughs> absolutely believe me. No, no, no. I, I, let me do the express. I'm a very important engine, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, Henry, so... Henry and James are mixed traffic. Gordon is really the only sort of dedicated yep. express passenger locomotive. And like you said, they're pulled stopping passenger trains, I would assume. Anyway, and very and, and strangely enough, very in the very early in this in in the series, I think it's series one. The fat controller says, basically says to Gordon that he doesn't like b- 
big engines. He doesn't trust big engines like Gordon. Like he, he's literally standing on a barrel and says, "Oh, I don't, I don't, I, uh, I don't like <laughs> I these really big engines." Irish. <laughs> well, I, I, I can't. I, come on. I don't I'm like big do, engines. I'm trying I don't to do like Ringo. Them. Oh, <laughs> faith in the God, I can't like these big engines. Don't like but yeah, he, he, like he, he basically dismisses Gordon. As an unreliable big engine, which is which is yeah, quite because, strange. I mean, just imagine, just imagine, just imagine. You know, you're Alex Ferguson. You've got David Beckham, this you know swan, this kind of superstar. That's a problem. Or, or you know, Cristiano Ronaldo. You can see why a character like the Fat Controller is going to have a problem with the big engine. He's too big for his boots. He's not going to, you know, he's not going to get. He's not going to track back. He's not going to pull. You know, he's not going to muck in when he needs to. He, I mean, Gordon's a diva. He's a prima donna. The, so... the island isn't that big either. So in reality, you only really need him to pull that one train that is the prestige and not really actually makes... It probably, probably operates at a loss, the Express, in reality. But it's there for prestige because you've got to have an Express. Hmm. So yeah, there's um, there are some other aspects to this uh, to, to, to mention, um, which is that um, if you cause a ticket refund, confusion and delay, that is a real problem, you know. Um, but you know, causing delay is bad enough, and all of, you know, Thomas especially hates being late. Um, Gordon hates being late. Uh, I mean, some of the faces James pulls if he's ever delayed for any reason. Um, <laughs> you know, they're classic faces. Um, James James is the most ill-tempered of the engines, as far as I can get. I, I have, I, James is just peak peak midwittery. I, I'm going to be honest; he, he really James is. is. He's <laughs> always cross. Almost every shot of James, he's he's pulling a stink I, face. He's I thought James is a, James is a great parable for the middle class. Really, he's always yes. on the social climb. He's always disgruntled. He always wants to get Gordon's, you know, he always wants to pull the express. And he, uh, loves, his re- he loves his red coat of paint. He loves it. If, if James was a real paint. person, he would be a 110 IQ middle class civil servant who aspires <laughs> to become an MP. Like that, That's who James is in reality, in real life. But, but in a strange way, just to defend him, and we, we will get on to the, each of the characters in, the, in a second, um... I think there's something about that that maintains the maintains the order. It's the fact that <laughs> it's the fact that James buys into Gordon's bullshit, maintains the whole social hierarchy. Because if James if J- if James didn't buy into all of Gordon's all of Gordon's kind of hot air, um, you know the, the likes of Duck would just uh, you know I think Duck would end up kind of convincing enough of the other engines that none of that stuff matters because. Duck is kind of like a rival, you know. Kind of, mm. kind of, okay. Can I can I just interrupt? Yeah. Laura Pendosa in the chat said James should be called Karen, and I have to agree. I I thought that whilst <laughs> I was rewatching it. He, James is a total Karen. That's what he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I mean, I I had I had the thought, and I I know uh, I know you're not a fan of this because you don't watch uh, Top Gear D, but um, I had the thought that Gordon is Clarkson. James oh, of course. Is, uh, James is Hammond, and uh, Henry is uh, James May. Mm, there's some truth to that. Um, also, I have to disagree yeah. with this hierarchy a little bit. I, I yeah. consider getting the branch line to be the top, because it's almost like the fat controller, he's giving out a fiefdom to you. You're getting your own little fiefdom and where you reign. Like Thomas has his branch line, and Duck and Oliver have the little western, and Edward has the Brendan branch, and it's like that's their domain. That's their little domain. And it's almost like he's bestowing that upon them, and they have to prove I mean, themselves worthy. I will say that Thomas getting his branch line because I, I have, you know, I, when I was researching this, I discovered that like the the train that Thomas was based on really was a goods engine. He was, you know, he was meant to be shunting trucks and you oh. know hauling goods, and the fact that he ends up getting his own passenger line <laughs> is pretty like it's a little bit like um, I don't know. Uh, it's hard, to, it's hard to know what an analogy is, but um, it's like he's been promoted beyond his beyond his rightful capabilities in a way. Um, and, in um, in a way, yes. Yeah, and so, he he gets that yeah. he gets that branch line very early in the in the in the show. 
uh, like in the first series, I think he he he's he gets some um, Clarabel and and uh, Annie, yes. uh, and and has has that branch line. So yeah, that very quickly bestowed upon him. Uh, strangely enough, it is like it is like getting your own kind of you know dukedom or earldom or something, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, like here's your. Yeah. Um, but the main line is still come on the prestige. You know, of course, you've got to give it to Gordon. And uh, and James and Henry, they're the they're the main. Um, I mean, we'll talk more about that in a second. But the the big engine's refusal to do donkey <laughs> work is one of my favourite aspects of the film. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, let's. Uh, I just wanted to share this now. Um, I made this kind of at the end of you know in the middle of season three. This is probably uh, you know I could update it again. But in terms of the fact that Cola's basic basic kind of formation here, we've got Gordon on the main line as expressed, <laughs> supported by Henry and James. Henry running fish up and down. And I imagine that there's a like Henry does a lot of the changeovers with the branch lines of notice. Like he's often waiting for Thomas or whatever. So he must do passengers. Oh, he, uh, yeah, he's a mixed traffic engine. You do see him pulling. And J- James, it seems to me, does do a lot of donkey work, um, but is almost always the sub for Gordon when something happens to Gordon. And literally his face lights up, you know, oh, I get to pull the coaches, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, the locomotive yeah. James is based on was a freight type of locomotive. Um mm. was, the, was Henry's mixed traffic and Gordon was an express. But yeah, James... <laughs> Yeah, he, oh, just, I I just despise them. I despise them. <laughs> I just I just he, he represents everything that's wrong in the modern world. Like he's the one character that just oh, so, so then Thomas has got his own branch. Edward has got his own branch. A lot of the show is built around, I would say, the left hand side of this. Edward is out in his own world. It's like oh, oh, Edward still exists. Ed- oh, Edward's okay, so a bit it's, too. Good to really have too many episodes about because he doesn't really get much wrong, Edward. He always seems to do, you know, like. He's yeah, I watched some... this. Um, I watched this like twelve-year-old's rankings of uh, <laughs> of <laughs> bank, uh, characters, <laughs> you know, to see what the standard of analysis out there was. Because um, you know, you've got to you've got to have some understanding of competition. Because we, the three of us, are going to take this world by storm. <laughs> Telling you, unlucky tug, we're coming for your turf, son. <laughs> um, and. Um, uh, he put Edward like rank bottom of his, you know, original. Like, there's a hierarchy in the fandom where any anything to do with the classic series is automatically above the, the modern stuff, right? Of course. So, but given that caveat, he put Edward as rank bottom for the for the reason that he's just too perfect and. It's a bit boring, really. It's just too nice. And... Ed, Edward what? is like a less irritating, less condescending version of Ray from the new Star Wars films. Oh, just... no, no, no! <laughs> I mean, as I said, Edward is like one of the oldest of the of the of the engines. Like he 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 he's, he is the sort, of, sort of elder, I think, of the entire group. And then, uh, right at the top of this uh, formation, we'll, we'll talk more about Edwin in a second because we, we, we do have uh, individual profiles. In, yeah, we should account. save that for the individual. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, any, any, anyway, I should mention that unlucky, according to Unlucky Tug, Edward is the best character and he's got a whole video uh, devoted to mm. Edward and why he's the best. But basically his argument is Edward is like an absolute hero in all ways, which is which is essentially what we're saying here. Um, but you, his branch, I would say, is out of focus for much of the show. It's yeah. like something else happening over there, and occasionally there's cause to go that way, and um, you end up meeting like Trevor hanging out in the orchard. That's 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 Edward's branch, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he becomes friends with Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you've got, but, I mean, but Edward is like, Gan- like someone. Someone in the chat said like Gandalf. I mean, Edward is like the Maya. He's he's like the the sort of primeval <laughs> end. He actually is. He's like he's like no one understands. Like no one no one in the show seems to really understand 
how old and important Edward actually is, and he kind of cultivates that. But uh, yeah, I mean, he he is the kind of all powerful character that everyone just doesn't but underestimates. I think he's based on an old Furness railway locomotive from the 19th century, so he's he's yeah. he is, as I pointed out, a very old uh, locomotive compared to all the others. Yeah, I think I think all the others are 20th century um, uh, engines, and, and he isn't. Thomas it might is... technically no, oh, no. Thomas is probably 20th century as well. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then, and then and Percy, who who's a much smaller engine than the others, he's only got he's only got four wheels. Um, um, he, as far as I can tell, if you were to work out the Pareto principle, Percy, are, Percy and Thomas are like the 20 percent who do 80 percent of all the work, and then <laughs> and then he's he's. Like, you know, and, and Toby, to be fair, Toby would be part you, of twenty percent. You were very well. anti. You were very anti Percy. AA. Yeah, yeah. What, what brought you around? It was realizing just how much stuff he does around the place. Um, oh, in that, in that that's, episode, where he, yeah. that, that's reflected in reality because the small engines that you never see are in reality doing a hell of a lot of work that you never see. Everyone always just sees the engines like Gordon and we're going around in, on the main line or whatever, but there was hordes of little Percy's on all sorts of private sidings and factories and collieries and all this sort of place, just doing unseen work. Now, now I didn't get time to update this, but there's another branch coming off here or over there, you know, whichever direction you want to pick, um, which is Duck and Oliver's branch, right? The, the little Western, mm. they call it. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you'd add Toby to Thomas's branch. Like, is there a quarry attached to Thomas's branch? It's yeah, it's like the that. Farquhar quarry. That's where Mavis works. And Toby takes the trucks up to the quarry because he's a tram engine. And... Yeah, I mean, Toby does a lot of work around here. And um, but then, for a while. Thomas, Toby, and Percy slept in like a different shed, but then they all sleep in the same shed together. So I was trying to work out like where that was. And um, according to Unlucky Tug, it's in Knapford Docks or something. They all, yes, that's where the shed is. So, is that right? There's a few different sheds, and they tend to not always sleep in the same one, from what I can tell. Right. But it seems, it seems like from season five onwards, they all, you know, all seven of them sleep in the same place. Um, Sorry, and, and eight of them because the duck is there as well. So, anyway, um, uh, and us... also, I, I mean, I will. You know, I think later on, if we get to it, uh, the, the AA was not really interested in the narrow gauge trains, but I'm quite curious how how that how the narrow gauge story fits in with the main you know, with the main lines of Sodor, because they, they meet, I mean, eventually, uh, they meet up. I mean, you see Gordon talking to, talking to Sir Handel and such. So, so th there is a, a, a contemporary relationship, but I'm not entirely sure how the narrow gauge lines interface. Yeah, I was with trying the to work lines. that out as well, D, and I believe there are two dogs. There's a Brendam dog and there's a, um, Brendam Dock is the is the big one, which has got that crane in it, that cranky crane, right? Cranky, yes. Yeah. Um, and then there's the Natford Dock, which is the uh, the one they all sleep in, mm. which is also the terminal of the station as well. Um, and I want to say the narrow gauge engines end up working like down in that dock for a lot of the time. Um... Well, uh, firstly, right. as a Welshman, you're obligated to like the narrow gauge engines. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. I mean, <laughs> I like them because, to me, the entire narrow gauge story is a Welsh story. I mean, they're yes. clearly in Wales. Uh, like, like that part of so that part of Sodor is clearly Wales. So... I don't dislike. I don't dislike the narrow gauge engines. I just resented the entirety of, of series four being devoted to them. I was like, well, oh. only half of it's devoted to them. Come on. Yeah, I, I mean, want to see, it, you know, it I, was blends impatient. In. I wanted to see more Gordon moaning, <laughs> which is the heart of the show. But the well, gauge I, I love, I love the narrow gauge stories. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very definitely the opposite of you. The narrow gauge stuff is literally just a Talithlin railway 
yeah. but with faces on. Like all of the engines are based on real ones from that railway, and it's all I mean, and they're, it's they're called like the real... Scarlowy Railway. And yeah, like yeah, real it's... functional. Like they they all have names, like Dolgoch, and they all they're they're, they're yeah. all real actual functional en- uh, functional engines. Yes, yeah, so. exactly. It's very quaint and very wholesome. You, you just... Yeah, so I, I think my, yeah the 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 fact that I sort of twig that that the narrow gauge stories were sort of Welsh stories was was perhaps why I liked them so much, but. Also, so most uh, of the yeah. most to just point out, but most of the lines are on the southern part of the island, and it seems like the narrow gauge ones kind of go up into the more central and northern parts where there's a lot more hills and, and stuff. And yeah, that's kind of grayed out and out of focus on the map. I, yeah. I learned that from uh, Unlucky Tug. So they they basically move up there for most of the for most of the after like season five or whatever. After season four, you never see them again. Um, but let's uh, let us have a look now at my uh oh by the way we should return yeah. to the the hierarchy one i did and there's, there's a map on there's, there's a couple of things we missed on my intro we should uh right. oh, just quickly s- switch back i i think it merits further discussion well what we're we looking at here um uh, i think it's the, yeah this one here we go so what you're missing from the equation is that Gordon is not the elite. The engine drivers are the natural elites because only they can do the fat controller's job because they are also human beings. Yeah, well, there's a kind of interspecies thing there, isn't there? Like a kind of within the world. Steady of the on. <laughs> <laughs> he was I mean, getting a bit excited. The, within the world Oi. of the within the world of the engines, Gordon is the Gordon is top dog, but above them in the great chain of being are humans in general, right? Yeah. Uh, of whom... I have, a, qu- I have, a, I have yeah. a question about the drivers and, and the firemen. It, it's like, to me, I mean, again, I, 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 I haven't read the books. I, I, I think I've read a couple of the books many years ago. But like, I, I'm curious of what the relationship, because the engines seem sentient and they seem self-directed but they also require drivers to kind of do something but I, I, I think it's not clear like what that who is actually in the in the in control of that situation. breaking deep but they need drivers need to break because if there's at least two stories i can think of where the engine cannot break without their driver so that's one thing. They can't do. They shouldn't be able to do anything without a driver. <laughs> I mean, they can go, like, but they can't break. You actually, you actually look at it. Um, I believe it is mentioned a few times that they can't actually move without the driver. You know, turning on the regulator. There's there's an episode where Thomas goes for a little bit of a walkabout on his own, and he thinks he's doing it himself. But the only reason he can is because one of the cleaners fiddles oh, yeah, with his regulator. Yeah. And so yeah. it is is implied that they can't stuck on, right? Yeah, and so the, and, the and they only... have they have brake vans, but the brake vans n- can never stop them. I don't <laughs> <understand>. <laughs> yeah, brake vans are a bit useless in real life, to be honest. But I mean, but they got the managerial elites. Like I said, that if you actually look at half of the problems in that show are caused by those three engines, right? They're the midway engines, the managerial elites. <laughs> and then it's the skilled workers below them that are actually doing most of the real work when you actually look mm. at the show and what goes on. Based. Based. People like Percy, yeah. Thomas, Toby, the Donald and, Donald and Douglas. Like they're the ones Donald, doing the real work. Donald and Douglas, um, Ben and... Um, uh, uh, oh. Bill and Ben. Bill and Ben, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, they're, they're they're a bit they're a yeah they're a bit compromised by their kind of um, idiocy, I think. But... Well, well, yes, yes, and and then obviously underneath, then you've just got women because oh, the miserable women. Yeah, <laughs> See, I mean Daisy is perhaps like the worst character. Is <laughs> like what is the deal with Daisy? Women, Daisy is just the ultimate thought. And and then she gets she she gets thought patrolled by the fat controller who puts her in her place. Like she does. Yeah. Have you noticed the musical cue for Daisy? Is yeah, just this. It's, almost, it's like stripper. It's like yeah, stripper music. Exactly. It's, it's, it's like some sort of peak Weimar, like sort of nineteen twenties burlesque music that plays. Yeah. She comes on the street and she's got the heavy makeup on as well. And it's oh. just it's like, what are you trying to say about? 
<laughs> with, you know, he's gone. He's, oh, gone. he's gone. He's gone. Well, then, then, so I, I, what I will say, there's the, the, like later, there's like uh, later before, you know, in season series seven, there's Emily and Mavis. All right. I'm back. Sorry. Uh, oh, hello. Yeah, my, my, my internet briefly cuts out for some reason. Um, okay. So. We were, uh, we were we were dissing the female engines, yeah. Yeah, so we were just talking about the, the female representation in the Railway series and how it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that, da- that every time Daisy appears, like, they play stripper music. Yes, exactly. It's, mm. And then, of course, I mean, then, of course, <laughs> be- below them, we've got the trucks, don't we? The, oh. the, uh, the who are... I mean, one of the things I really love about the show is that they're not just scum. They can't even they like they can't be trusted with any. Not even for a second can you trust them. Yeah. And there's like a rites of passage for any new train that comes in. You know, they come in naive, a bit green behind the ears. The trucks, like you know, yeah. sod them up for a, for an episode, and then they kind of learn to be humble. The, the, the that happens trucks. a lot. I, I love the trucks so much because they oh. are just, as you said, absolute scum. They are just, it's like, some, I, I know mean, you were talking about it on Twitter and someone said they've got North FC faces, which is they really <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, I, mean, I remember some trying to a- analogize them as working class, but they're not working class. They're, they're, not, like, no. they're like dysgenic scum. They I mean, are. literally, everything that they, every time, like everything they do is basically to say, you know, we're going to cause trouble. Faster, faster, faster! They break loose and then they die. I mean, literally, they are every time, literally every decided. time they get loose, they're like lemmings. Every time they break free, <laughs> they kill well, themselves. <laughs> when, when I made when I when I made the uh, when I made my um, you know Thomas the Tank Kali Yuga, the re- the reason I had the trucks in charge <laughs> was because you know in the you know if you were going to use like the old the old Hindu way of doing it, you know if these if these guys are Brahman. This is like untouchables, you know. They're not even. <laughs> they're not even the working poor. You know, no, Thomas is not. the working man, right? Thomas is the working man. These guys are like underclass. The underclass. The, underclass, the spiteful mutants. Absolute, absolute scum. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they. You know, and and this is where this is why I kind of this is part of it. This is why I I'm convinced Thomas Carlyle would love it. Because they literally have to be shunted into place, <laughs> they, they must. They have to be forced uh, to do anything. Place. They, they, <laughs> they just, they just are. Someone in chat was saying um, train and truck IQ differences are real. Uh, which is... I mean, <laughs> the, tru- the trucks are just talk, talk about high, high time preference. Nothing is more oh. high time preference than lem- suiciding yourself just to yeah, spite they're... the engines. Pure spiteful mute. I mean, it's, it's hilarious. Literally, all they want to do is is die. They just want to. <laughs> what, what, what I love is what I love about this is that the all of the the white the kind of the wise heads they know that like this is just wisdom uh, on the island. Like you know, you can't tr- trust a truck not for any amount of time. Not even if you th- even if you think you're getting friendly with them. It's just in their nature to screw you over. It's in their yeah. nature to cause a havoc. And I, I'm trying to remember who um, it, they just says. Uh, ev- I think the fat controller says at one point, "Every wise engine knows that you cannot trust trucks." Yes, you know, and there's, it has there's also, he knows. Even he knows. There's, there's also this incredible moment in one of the diesel episodes where, after the trucks have made fun of of diesel. And he's uh, he's telling he's telling, diesel. Yeah, he's telling he's telling the other engines about it. And I've I've got the quote here. He says, Nonsense, said Henry. Duck would never do that. We engines have our differences, but we never talk about them to trucks. That would be des des disgraceful, said Gorham. Yeah, disgusting. I mean, that, like, it's like yeah. we managerial elites have our differences, but we never talk about them We're in front of the never storm. gonna stoop that low, but <laughs> diesel stoops that low. Uh, also, I remember like I think it was Toby. Like Toby knows more about trucks. Trucks. Like Toby has forgotten more about trucks than you will ever know. I think it was Toby. But yeah. yeah, that's right. To- Toby knows everything there is to know about them, and uh, you know you, you have, you've got to use a firm hand with the truck. That's what I learned. Oh. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the, what, it, this Look is a the, picture. The Chad energy on this man right here. Just dear lord, <laughs> look at him. Look at him. 
Oh. And then, and then uh, yeah, um, and this this is the this is the map. Yes, the... it gives you a good idea. It's between the Isle of Man and Barrow and Furnace, basically, from what I can tell, in the Irish Sea. And that's the that's the unlucky tugs map. I, I downloaded it from that video because I, strangely, I watched that video about the same time you did. Uh, I think it might have been coming up on the algorithm or something was going on there. But I was I was just I was amazed by the levels of autism displayed in that video. It's incredible. No, no, I have to say about Unlucky Tug. Apart from that, I'm a little bit disappointed by his content. You know, his other than this map, a lot of his output isn't very good, in my opinion. Um, he's got like this low IQ kind of armored skeptic kind of buddy that he does videos <laughs> with sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like sick bird, sick bird. I mean, they they were shocking. Like, there's there's this one video called um, "Unanswerable Thomas Questions." Absolute shite, just rubbish. Um, so yeah, this is by far his best best work in my in my opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, I I do think that the Thomas community lacks depth and lacks Britishness. Um, I, I also discovered that there's a there's a strong line in just making your own Thomas. Mm. So such is dissatisfaction with the CG series. A lot of the Thomas channels just make their own their own episodes, like they just write yeah. their own stories, and it's, it's kind, kind of, of weird, been that. reclaimed by the fan base. It's it's very strange, but. I applaud that. I applaud their efforts. I've, uh, yeah, I, I saw that. I'm very, very, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a yeah. tourist. I'm, so, yeah. I'm not having a go. I'm not having a go at uh, unlucky tug. If any, uh, if any Thomas community people <laughs> starting come YouTube here. drama, um, <laughs> We're gonna I'm not having a go at him. I'm just saying that sports between AA I'm, and unlucky. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying that if like if he's their best, there's not there's not much else going on in that community apart from him. In, in my from what I could tell. Ooh. Oh, there's quite, um, there's Andy, War Andy Worski hosts AA and Unlucky. Welcome to another episode of Worski Live, and tonight we've got on Academic Agent and the Lucky Talk talking about whether Bill and Ben are a net negative to Sodor. I, go. Where oh. I mean, I, I was hoping for there to be like some like middle-aged British men who were just obsessed with trains, but they the didn't is, seem those... to exist. Those people just a lot do of exist in quite large numbers, but they don't have YouTube channels. I, I know these people, and they do yeah. exist. I know a great many oh, of they, them. They Why certainly... don't they get in on the unlucky tug action? You know? Because they're not well. One, they've got a life, probably, and two, they're, they're just they're just not. They're too boomerish. Like it's just yeah. the boomer levels are very sure. high. Transcend the internet, yes. Yeah, too many Americans in that whole space. But uh, anyway. Um, I, we have got now this uh, little little slide for each character. So uh, we've talked a bit about the Fat Controller already. Uh, his main job, of course, is running the Northwestern Railway on the island of Sordor. Um, and in the show, he owns it, right? He's, it's a private line that he owns himself. It's not, a, it's not nationalized in the show, is it? It is. Um, no. In the books, it? it was, but I don't know if it is in the show. It's never really mentioned in the show. Yeah, they don't really get into that. Although, I mean, it, 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 his ownership is is quite vast because it extends beyond the railway. Like he owns, apparently, owns the quarries. He owns the docks. Um, he he even owns a circus. Like there's a there's a top on circus in 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 one episode. <laughs> like he, he, he also. Seems so I was going to say, he also owns Harold the Helicopter. That's why there's no leftists on Sodor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, noticed that, I noticed that there are a couple of other operations on Sodor. There's the, the China Clay Company, the Sodor China Clay Company. They, I don't think Fat Controller owns that. Um, and um, there's also the... Um, there's a what else is there uh is that the only other uh, there's the really mines there? there's the mines there's a few different types of coal mine and the quarry right. although he seems to have control of the mines because remember he he like tried to open like try to reopen one of the mines and he ended up opening it as a kind of attraction and like he he also comes across across a ruined like uh, country house and 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 decides to reopen it as a track and so he seems to have sort of fingers in lots of pies 
he, yeah. it's never really explicitly stated. I, I always assumed that like there was some sort of, um, you know, possible investment with opportunities with other people going on. You know, where he would go into co-ownership of various business interests on but the he, island. I mean, he he takes trains on loans from other people sometimes. You know, mm. Diesel most famously. Yeah, like Diesel. Yes. Yeah. Um, Which makes sense because, like I said, Bowering Furnace is just across a, a relatively short bridge on the other side of the island, so they they can easily get engines from the big railway if they need to. Mm. So I, I've said that he likes order and he likes really useful engines. He dislikes confusion and delay. Um, his real name is Sir Topham Hat. Most people don't call him that, but Diesel always calls him Sir Topham Hat in his kind of slimy manner. And very occasionally the other engines mention it, but almost always in the context of you don't want to you don't want to annoy the fat controller. He is so top of that, you know, you know. Um, but only about two occasions that I can remember anyone other than Diesel using that name. So that is his um, formal name. And as we have said, he is a baronet. He isn't. He isn't just some plebeian knight of the realm. He is a baronet. Right. Yeah. He's got. He's got a hereditary title, which I didn't know. Um, yeah, but I, I, I will I, also it, say, I mean, he, he yeah. you know, he. I, I think it's also important that he, he, he is not exactly the kind of he. Even though he looks like the kind of caricature of the rapacious industrialist, I mean, he, he isn't because he doesn't. He, he makes decisions, various decisions through the series that aren't entirely motivated by financial interest. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean it, it does seem like what he's done with Sodor is essentially make a preserved steam railway that possibly breaks even. Like it's never really explained mm. exactly if because in reality nowadays, if you had an island of Sodor like that where steam locomotives were doing revenue earning service, it would be a massive tourist attraction. <laughs> You'd make yeah. insane amounts of money just from tourism if you had something like that in reality. So well, well later on in in the later series, they do make reference to the fact that Sodor has a massive holiday industry. You know, like, pe- yes. like there's lots of references to people coming to Sodor for holidays uh, and and visiting the castles and you know the the banner house and the mines and and all all Beaches, these things. So, the beach, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Um, so so um, yeah, it, it is quite curious that that relationship. Uh, he, he reassures the engines that they won't get scrapped, as we mentioned. Mm. One of the things I quite like about the show, which I don't remember when I was, you know, when I watched it when I was little, um, is that you get to, very occasionally you get to see, like, you know, him having his breakfast or eating a muffin. <laughs> and uh, in one of the episodes I watched earlier on, it was um, Lady Hat's birthday. Yes. <laughs> and he gets a new suit and he's like, oh, I can't be late, you know. And, um, I mean, I don't know if it was just me, but it seemed to me that Lady Hat is significantly posher than him. Yes. Yeah. He's, married up. In the... he's married up very much. He's married he? up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you said he's a baronet, but in the show he comes across more like a kind of Manchester industrialist who's made good type thing. I think um, he was a noble. I think he was a noble. I think he was raised to the peerage uh, because of his service to industry. I mean, he's, you know, he's like... very much, I mean, again... Um, he's the sort of character that I'd imagine, you know, when Thomas Carlyle uh, talks about uh, Bobus Higgins, uh, you know, sausage maker on the great scale, um, the fat controller is kind of a Bobus, a Bobus Higgins type character in some ways. Yeah, or like Jacob Rees Mogg, you know, mar- marrying an actual aristocrat. <laughs> Um, yeah, any other notes about uh, Fat Controller before we move on? I, mean, I would also a... suggest... Oh, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go on. I was going to say, he's just an absolute chad, isn't he? Let's be honest, though. He, he oh, really I... is. Like, he'd get Brexit done. You know, he, you know he would. You know, he'd, he'd, he, 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 would, he would stand in front of those pop... National Guard soldiers and they <laughs> just say, will you shoot your controller? <laughs> I'm going to pop in here and also suggest that perhaps there's some flaws i mean first of all he's fat so he has <laughs> poor imp- he he has poor impulse control um, <laughs> and possibly a very high time preference but also uh, we, lest we forget i mean like literally one of the first episodes in the in, in the first series i think it's episode three or, or, or something 
he he literally walls up Henry in a tunnel <laughs> to torture him. Like he he closes off one of the line one of his lines. Like he he just he 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 makes his one of his railway lines defunct in order to wall Henry up in a tunnel to torture him. So well, punishment punishment is necessary. But that's not punishment. I mean, that's to, to beyond be fair, punishment. He, he that's, that's, a, that's a little psychotic thing. <laughs> he didn't stop in a tunnel again after that, did he, to be fair? So it, it clearly worked. He I didn't, mean, but his... I think that there's a, there's, a, there's a suggestion that that goes beyond... Like, he doesn't do anything like that again. Like, that was a one-off. Fat like... controller's punishments work. Yes. That's one of the things I've learned, is that his punishments always work. They always learn their lesson. It's like, yeah. instead of sending someone to prison, the fat controller would just have them flogged instead, you know? He says, prison doesn't solve anything. He'd just be like, just give him a bit of the... Give him, give him you know what he didn't, he didn't imprison Henry. He, he walled him in a tunnel, but he built the wall only up to a point so that Henry could see the other engines going in and out of the other tunnel. I mean, there's something very psychotically similar. There's a, you see, this is, this is Dee's Catholic heart. Yes, I can tell. Struggle, yeah. Struggling against the, <laughs> I tough, the tough Protestant love of my, my Anglican oh, upbringing is telling me that that controller no, did nothing wrong by putting him in that tunnel. It's horrifying. <laughs> there is no mercy there. I don't like it. So I'm, I'm a bit less sanguine about the fat controller than you do. <laughs> I mean, he is... Uh, you know, he is in all those uh, in all those ranting uh, essays by Carlisle. Fat Control is the sort of man he wants in charge. You know, tough but ultimately wise. Um, and in fact, I even made a, a bit of a meme on it on Twitter. You're not on Twitter, are you? Uh, uh, I I do Spieler. I do look at your uh, Twitter every now and again just to see if I've missed anything anything important. Well, let me let me let me just share this one because. Um, I think it's probably pro- probably worth it uh, in the interest of this uh, in the interest of this particular chat. But you, but who you? <laughs> not me. Someone, someone wise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all hail, all hail the fat controller. All hail the railway king. Oh. So, uh, so there we I go. Bet, I bet the fat controller has consumed many Charlie Bigger meals. <laughs> yeah, big sugar butter fat. I bet yeah. he's, he loves his sugar. Interestingly, so hey, hey, did, did you notice that there's quite a few times in the TV series and in the books where you get a picture of him at his house eating a breakfast and there's always a toast rack present? On, yeah, on yes. the toast rack, <laughs> toast rack, <laughs> mutton. Toast rack. <laughs> yeah. Um, I bet, I bet he doesn't yeah, have yeah. any mixer taps either. I bet he has double taps, like a true, mm. a true gentleman. People are sending me in awesome memes. Like I bet in ten years of the internet, uh, unlucky tug hasn't made people making these memes. I mean, look at, look at, the, look at the quality <laughs> on that. We might have to do a meme, a meme review at the end of you, this of course. Stream. Please can delay. Saw all meme transport. review. Oh. <laughs> okay. So yeah, he's um... Herman Goring. That's what he is. I mean, he's 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 more like a certain disgruntled mid-century Italian school teacher, really. In in, in, in a few ways, only the fat controller wouldn't lower himself to doing manual labor like Mussolini. Mussolini pretended to be a man of the people and do manual labor. Well, the fat controller wouldn't you, do that. You say that they, there is an episode where the fat controller puts on overalls yes. and actually and and actually drives a train. So I, 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 one thing I did like about him is that he. He doesn't seem to be reticent to 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 get his hands dirty and go down there and actually direct the day to day activities, <laughs> including driving a train. You know, he oh. does fire Thomas, oh. doesn't he? Yeah, I, see, I like this. Yep. I thought I've got many screen grabs of this one because it's just brilliant. Everyone pulled except the fat controller. Oh. He's got well, somebody yeah, there. He had a medical excuse. His, doctor said, <laughs> his doctor said he can't pull. <laughs> no, but he—he's not too ill to—he's not too uh, infirm to, to every every shot of the fat controller. He's standing on a barrel yeah, or a crate. He's an absolute manly. He's a—he's a, a pure manly. <laughs> I mean, this reminds—I I had this—I had this friend at school who, um, obviously, I, I won't name, but um, 
you know, he was something of a, you know, something of a, a, a braggart and a Chad character. And um, every once in a while, he used to do this thing where he'd um, he'd have like frutellas, okay, and he'd throw the frutellas <laughs> on the floor, and people would scram, people would kind of scramble oh, about oh, the frutellas God. like beggars, you know, <laughs> and he would. <laughs> And he would stand there somewhat like the fat controller God. as people scrambled around on the floor. Be, be honest and now, AA. Yeah. Was this person you? Was, is no, this, it wasn't you. Was this the elitist triangle where you used to just throw he was, <laughs> This person was a member of the elitist triangle. He was. Of course they were. Yeah. Of course they were. God, There's the some old lore for people. <laughs> the elitist triangle. <laughs> I mean, he's even, he's even got someone to hold an a umbrella minion. for him. Holding the umbrella. <laughs> the fat controller always has at least two minions. I've got quite a few screen grabs here where you can see with these little minions behind him who never say anything. They're just there. Oh, he's that is incredible. Peg. <laughs> um, my oh. doctor has forbidden me to push. <laughs> Here we there's go. Henry, Henry I, getting bricked up. I hate I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Henry did Henry did nothing wrong. He deserved his punishment. Uh, somebody you saw that to... You saw that little somebody... clip I made of, of Gordon. Like Henry's walled up there, like looking over and Gordon's like, I'm going to poop poop at Henry. <laughs> oh, in my dream of dream in my dream of dreams, the internet would be elite enough. Somebody to for somebody to parody this with Carlisle, Carlisle's mo- model prisons. Uh, he where Carlisle goes here and then complains that the fat controller left a gap for him to like in his ideal world, he <laughs> wouldn't leave the gap for Henry to peer over, It'd just be know, the black hole of Calcutta. Too much no, no, much. He, he, the gap is the cruelty, the gap <laughs> is, is so that he can see the other engines free. <laughs> This but is this is like is the sinister part. I, I, my favorite part is the fact that all the other engines get in on the bullying, and they just... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, said, like Gordon's like smiling, like I'm going to poop poop at Henry. <laughs> I'm going to laugh at this, this in prison forever. I mean, this is what I love about the about the world of the of the engines. They, you know, they they're always happy to tease and to and to get and to get involved in a pile in basically all of them like every time and then that line and then that line yeah you have it there like subtitle uh, ringo's like but i think he deserved his punishment don't you <laughs> no i love that that's from the book that line's directly from the book i just, no. i love that they kept that in I don't. I'm a bleeding heart Catholic. They, oh, there's there's one particular part in I think it's in series two that they cut out from the books, and it's the one where you know some boys mess with James's controls, and he goes like a runaway yeah. engine. I have took a screen grab of it. I think after it's all over, there's like on the last page, there's a, a few lines where he says some policemen found the boys and handed them over to their fathers, who gave them a good walloping. <laughs> Which they unfortunately didn't keep in the book in the in the TV series. Ah, oh. well, do you remember the episode where the boys threw rocks and oh, broke I've got, the windows? Screen grabs of that one. They yeah. broke the windows of the coaches, and they're like, "Should we call the police?" No, no, no. We're not going to call the police. We're going to have Henry <laughs> blow hot cinders on the boys. <laughs> yes, yes. We're gonna we're gonna blow hot cinders on the. <laughs> You you combat the ashes of civilization with the, with the ashes <laughs> of steam locomotion. <laughs> uh, so, uh, if that so, happened nowadays, those boys would sue and get the compensation. Uh, they are. Um, I uh, I do. I mean, those boys are always being naughty. I I, I saw one earlier on where uh, they they tried to blame their troubles on a ram. Who's who's got loose? Oh yes, but, uh, yeah. Actually, it's just Tra- North- traps them, <laughs> traps them in the train station. It's and like gets people... to eat, and gets to eat the fat controller's top hat. That's a recurring so, theme. Yes, people, yeah, people so, think that, like yobbishness is a modern thing. It just it always kind of existed. We're just not as good at dealing with it now because you know they don't get beaten up by their dads or get ashes in their face. It's just, it's always <laughs> been there. You know, it's always. always let's uh, let us move on then. Because uh, now we have Thomas. I can hear our unlucky tug crowd. Boo! They're all saying no. Thomas is a good lad. Um, one of the things I would like to say about Thomas. Uh, well, first of all, his main job is on the Farquhar branch line, yes. often called Thomas's lines. He likes and more than anything else in the world impressing the fat controller. I mean, Thomas lives to 
to yeah. please the fat controller, I would say. Yes. He likes helping his friends, kind of. He likes being on time a lot. And he loves Annie and Clarabelle. And uh, he dislikes being late. He, uh, he dislikes being teased for any sort of accident. He dislikes uh, losing to Bertie, the, the, the bus in, in their various races. Yeah. And um, I would say his over-eagerness is both his chief weakness and his chief strength because a lot of the times where Thomas comes a cropper, so to speak, is because he's trying too hard. He's he's trying too hard to be on time. He's he's mm. too eager to impress the fat controller, and it gets him into trouble a lot of the time. So he's like the ideal worker, as you've said. He, yeah. I do think that you could learn a thing or two from Thomas, though, AA, eh? particularly about being on time. <laughs> and you just re- yeah. replace replace Bertie yeah. to to that that Greek guy from Street Fighter, the the the, the, the ice and fire guy. You you really don't oh, like losing God, to him, do you? God's sake. Oh, <laughs> well, God. well, Morcar doesn't. I mean, yeah, well, different indeed. Person, obviously. Um, yeah, indeed. Um, one thing I would say in Thomas's defence, which is why I was a bit appalled to find out that uh, he's disliked by the fandom, is that unlike many of the the bog sta- you know, the Mario, the um, you know the the everyman hero tends to be quite a mediocre character. So, like in any Mario like party game, Mario is like dead like seven out of ten average in all things, yeah. right? Um, or you know, it's, it's usually the case with where the he you know Mickey Mouse is kind of like. You know, he's a bit average in all things. He yeah. doesn't have any kind of standout characteristics. I would say Thomas has got a bit more about him than that. Like, he, mm. he's perfectly happy to join in the teasing. You know, he does a bit of bullying. Like, he gets in trouble. <laughs> he's not, like, a goody two-shoes. He is no. a goody two-shoes, but, he is- but he's he's not, like, squeaky, squeaky clean. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's just a bit of first an introduction. The first introduction to Thomas in the show... I think is Ringo saying Thomas is a cheeky little engine, you know, with with six six we- wheels and a stumpy dame and a stumpy funnel. Like, but I think the cheeky thing is part of his character. I mean, he 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 does want to please, but he also has an independent streak. Yeah, he's got a temper on him as well. Thomas does. I mean, yeah. he gets angry sometimes, it, it's, mm. and he gets angry with the other engines too. You're making me late, Percy. What are you doing? Um. And uh, some of the faces he makes. I mean, we talked about <laughs> James's faces. What about Thomas's faces? <laughs> he's not as ratty as James, but yes, <laughs> he, he does get annoyed. But he, the thing is, he's getting annoyed because he's being stopped from doing his job properly. You know, he's mm. not getting annoyed for personal circumstances. Like James, yes, he's not like he's... that. He's not just annoyed, yeah, over over pets personal slights he's annoyed because he's being prevented from you know doing what he needs to do yes indeed like, thomas wouldn't go on twitter and just rant about inane bollocks whereas james would you know, thomas james... wouldn't i don't think thomas would have a twitter account or if he, he did wouldn't. he'd have one which says at the top um you know these are my personal opinions only but then he would only tweet corporate stuff about how good <laughs> fat controllers company is you know yeah. we'll get you the goods on time like all, he, all yeah, i'm saying is that, is that busy and really useful people don't have twitter accounts that's all <laughs> <laughs> james is the type who would tweet out that he has like 18 degrees and and he, he's he's written five books and he's he's, he's got a- academic accolades yeah, I, saw, I saw that guy did you see I that mean, guy? <laughs> I, yeah, I, that's it, James. It took, me, it took me a straight to say, hold on, 20 years, five books? Eight five years, books six in books, 20 years? Yeah, I was going to say, that's a very low publishing record for him. But, uh... <laughs> um, a- anyway, um, let us uh, let us move. Anything else to say about Thomas before we move on? He, he's a generalist. He's an all-rounder. Yeah. You know? He can shunt. He can do local passenger. He can pull local freight. You know, or you can be a bank a banking engine. Do you know what a banking engine is, AA? No, what's a banking engine? A banking engine is an engine that is on duty to push other um, trains from the back up, like steep hills and whatnot. That's uh, what a banking engine does. They do it quite oh, a lot yeah, in the show. I mean, Edward Edward does a lot of banking, doesn't he? Yeah, yes, he's like a kind of champion banker. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of Edward, shall we move on to 
Edward. Um, he mainly works on the Brendan branch line, mainly known as Edward's line. He likes being kind. He uh, he has a very interesting relationship with the vicar. He like seems to like helping the vicar. I noticed there's a he, he does get on with the vicar quite well, doesn't he? The vicar in this show is incredibly based as well. Uh, he's what all, all religious. You know, ministers should be like the vicar in this show and own traction engines and an yeah, orchard. Track, yeah, yeah have, an, or have an orchard and do a fat and yeah. yeah. Um, they yeah, deprived us uh, of that. Uh, We've been deprived of, of, of the, the orchard and the fate and the traction engine. That's, that's yeah, or, or even knowing, like, I don't even know a vicar. Like, the idea of, uh, you know, have the vicar round for tea and so on, it doesn't really exist, does it? Um, I mean, I, I, know I would a say that. They just left it, so I don't like Edward it. Does, <laughs> Edward is a kind of uh, st- he, you know, if any of the engines would be a vicar, it would be Edward, wouldn't it? Um, he likes to yes. sell the occasional story. He likes uh, helping other engines uphill. You no, know, Edward the banker. Um, he he's also puts Bill and Ben in their place quite often. Uh, they make a big deal at some point that uh, Edward is the only engine that really knows how to deal with Bill and Ben, and he you know won't take any nonsense off them. Um, now. Even though it's quite difficult with Edward because he's a bit of a goody two shoes, um, he dislikes pointless, like modern innovations. <laughs> he voices his he voices his kind of skepticism about new fandangled kind of tech occasionally, um, and also he's it's a little bit subtle, but he doesn't like admitting any weaknesses. Like he's you know because he's old and. Yes. Um, you know, obviously he fears obsolescence. Um, and so he doesn't want to admit that he can't do things because he doesn't even want the thought to cross his mind that the fat controller might scrap him, you know? so He, he, he does have this sort of concern about his aging because he's, he's a bit older. He also doesn't resemble what he's supposed to resemble in real life particularly well. Uh, and I've also only now realized that there's a bit of steam locomotive phrenology going on in the island of Sodor because Bill and Ben, Percy, they're quite small, cheeky looking locomotives, and thus they have cheeky character in the show. Whereas the big, distinguished, proud locomotives are big, undistinguished, and proud, which I think is uh, interesting. That's how he's he's portrayed them. Yeah, well, when we got on to James, James has got kind of a fat face, I've always thought, uh, <laughs> which is, um, yeah, I, I mean, I've just noted here is the oldest engine on the line based on a, a model from 1896, and this is reflected in his mature personality. Somebody's just super chatted, um, who is the Luigi of Sodor? Oof. Um, I reckon Edward is a pretty good shout for Luigi, Tragic Vision said, who, I mean, if anybody's going to be the Luigi to Thomas's Mario, surely it's Edward, isn't it? There's no? there's certainly some truth to that. I or possibly Percy, but probably Luigi, but probably Luigi, probably Edward. Yeah, probably Edward. Yeah, yeah. I, I I will say though that you don't see Edward a lot. Like he he's often not around. I would say. I, I, I feel like I was a bit harsh on Edward earlier because now that I think about it, he does have those moments where he does overcome adversity, like when he's coupling rods snap or something and he has to carry on on just you know a single axle and whatnot like that he does have the moments where he you know he does have to triumph in the face of yeah, I mean, so, somebody somebody saying that uh it's not he's not close to being luigi because he's he isn't a massive coward i'm not thinking in terms of personality i'm thinking in terms of you know who is the can to thomas's ryu you know if you were to have a game who would be player two I, I think in that case, it's Percy then, because Thomas and Percy, they do kind of have this friendship going on mm. that the others don't have with him, I suppose. Yeah, I, I mean, Percy's his best mate. Yes. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Edward is weird. Like he, 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 I feel like he's not in loads of episodes, and even when they're all having their banter and so on, Edward's not really part of that banter crew either much. Edward's too uh, old for the, the banter. He's too distinguished. Yeah. You know, he's got too not much... involved in the, not involved in the bants. Uh, so he's yeah, kind of a bit on his own. He's above it all. He's he, yeah, he he's stands the, above he's it all. He's the Maya. He's the Maya of the engines. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's move on from Edward. Uh, then we've got Henry. 
uh, whose main job is working on the main line, uh, as oh. I mentioned, with the, with the Flying Kipper. Flying um, Kipper, yeah. Uh, he likes expensive Welsh coal. Uh, <laughs> oh, I mean, a man of pleasure. Coal, the best coal, yes. Anthracite um, coal. Uh, he dislikes cheap foreign coal because he can't run on it. <laughs> something about his box is too small or something, and the well. You know, I, I have to. I have to go. Firebox. I have to go off on a bit of a rant on this one here now. So yeah. in in the early stages of both the books and the show, it's unclear what locomotive he's based on, and he has a fairly standard firebox. It's a small sloped, um, you know, like circular top firebox. <laughs> But then, after he has his accident, well, that's why they get the Welsh coal because it burns hotter. Because Welsh Welsh anthracite is the best coal yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, and then, after he has his accident, he gets sent to crew, and he basically gets rebuilt as a Black Five, uh, and he gets yeah. a Belpair firebox, which is far better and burns a lot hotter and bigger. And that's that's why he he kind of has that funny shape in front of the cab after he gets rebuilt, and that's the Belpair firebox, which is far superior and doesn't need Welsh coal. Yeah. yeah, he gets a different drink. So I remember there's a time seal. Yeah. I, I I remember I read something about this, the, the, that Henry has a kind of clouded origin uh, in yes. that he may have been sold to the Fat Controller under false pretenses, and that he may have been based on a stolen design that was faulty, and so he was like a prototype that that had design flaws that which is which explains why he's ill uh, that so much that could be tr- some truth to that yeah i i think i read that somewhere he was supp- that's why he's just so <laughs> dodgy really like he doesn't yeah. he doesn't he doesn't resemble any particular there's a bit of like L in the RA1 about him but he doesn't resemble anything but then in the books he is literally rebuilt as a black 5 so it, it crew so he looks that's what he looks like but early on yeah it's very ambiguous so I mean, there's a there's a few things I, I've I've said in the notes. He's very particular, quote unquote. He's kind of an awkward character in many ways, prone to getting ill quite a lot. Um, I'd say you know expensive tastes, but I mean, tell me if you disagree. Unlike the other two, the other two big engines, James and Gordon, Henry is probably the nice one out of the three of them. Yes. Um, like I mean, he, there's this lovely story where. He likes to go to the forest. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> and it's like, I love oh, that. I love Henry's, that. Yeah. Henry's kind of got a romantic soul, and then he gets really upset when the trees are cut down. And I thought, oh, yeah. Henry. And Henry he, seems he, to be like the kind of a lake poet or someone, someone like yeah, that. He yeah, he he helps plant new trees. I I have a I have a great sort of fondness for Henry for some reason. So yeah, he's the esthete. Yeah. He he I mean, is the least midwit and the least sort of. Managerial elite of the three engines. He he's not beyond redemption. I consider James beyond redemption to be and, honest. And either. punished and punished and tortured by by the caprices of, of some <laughs> merchant. Yeah, yeah. But D, he 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 only became like this after he was punished and tortured. To be fair, I mean he he likes getting his chance to pull the express. Uh, same as James. Uh, although he's less keen, you know, he's less. Uh, you know, he doesn't put himself forward as much. Um, he dislikes shunting his own trains. Um, you know, usually he's prone to moan a bit. Henry is, I, I would say, he's a bit of a moaner. We need to talk uh, about the shunting question at some point. We need to. We'll get round to that one at some point. Yeah, I mean, but he doesn't like to shunt, does he? None of the three big engines like to shunt. Um, tender, tender engines they shunt. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Henry's like tender engines don't shunt. Tender the, engines are not supposed to shunt, but under certain circumstances, they they would do. It's complicated. There's, there's one. Um, there's one particularly ridiculous story where Gordon gets it into his mind that he needs a second tender, that he needs like two coal trucks. And Henry, I love that bit. I love because they see flying Scotsman, don't they? They see flying Scotsman. Yeah. had two tenders, famously. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah, want and Gordon, one. I want, I want two. And then is it is it D? I don't remember who it is who tricks Henry. But... It's Duck. He gives him, which is a real thing. He gives them those old tenders full of sludge, which they used to do on the real ra- railway. Yeah. <laughs> Henry's like, I'm going to have six tenders. I'm going to show Gordon. <laughs> and he ends up the, 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 the third tender is immoral. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How many tenders does one need? That's very typical uh, of the show, isn't it? Is that he, 
he, you know, Henry gets a, an idea above his station that he's going to have six uh, tenders and obviously ends up with egg on his face, correctly so, right? And mocked by the other engines. Um, so uh, there we go. Anything else about Henry before we move on? Uh, no, but other than, like you said, he's, he, he does seem to have a, a softer side and then somewhere. But he it's almost like he is like that, that third kid in the group of friends who kind of gets dragged along by the other... And he's the most... James May. He's yes, the James he, May. Is, he is the James May. He's the least dickish, and yet he somehow feels a need to be dickish in order to impress the other two kids, if you know what I mean, which, which happens in, in schools and that sort of scenario quite a lot. Henry is an aristocrat of the soul. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a, you've you've got them down as being managerial elite. I, I always thought they were more kind of aristocratic, but uh... and the reason why is is because they have ideas above their station at times. There's, there's that there's that particular episode where they fall out with Duck, and the fat controller just turns and they start to try and give Duck orders and they try and don't tell him what to do and he just gives them all a massive bollocking and says, "Duck, you fucked up because you've caused confusion and delay." And then the three midwits laugh and he goes, "And you, you've also cocked up. I'm the only one who gives orders on this railway, not engines." <laughs> and he puts them in the, they, they they get ideas above their station like midwits always do. They they they're, they're just they're elites, but they're not the true elites. Yeah, there is a. I guess what you're saying is, is that they, they, there's, there's a middle classness about the three of them. Yes, they're they're, mid, they're aspirational, aren't they? What yes. do you think? Uh, what do you think, uh, D? You're more skeptical. Yeah, I'm more skeptical. I mean, I I I, <laughs> I hold to the to the divine right of of the queen uh, over <laughs> the fat controller. You know, <laughs> I mean, so, and 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 the and the engines were deferential to the queen over the fat controller when she visited Sodor. So um, I I don't know. I, I... So let's uh, let's move on. We've got Gordon now. Hey, his, classic, oh, his classic expression here. Uh, his main job, of course, is on the express. He likes being reminded of his own importance. Uh, he likes. I mean. Gordon is not like a total bad egg. He like he does like helping smaller engines, but it's always in a scenario where he's reminded of his his own like like when he's he's pulling Thomas out of that lead mine that he falls into. You know, oh yes, I'll help you smaller engines, of course. I'll, you know, um, it, as long as his status is abs- as number one yeah. is absolutely not in doubt. He likes being on time. He dislikes shunting of any kind. He like he dislikes any non-passenger work such as mail or goods. All of these things are beneath him. Um, he dislikes any outsider coming in. Uh, there's one episode where a celebrity train is com- comes C- along. C- City of Churro comes along, who's more famous than he is, and he gets really insecure about it. I mean, Gordon absolutely despises any threat to his number one. <laughs> he, he, does like, he, he does a dome check on City of Truro, because City of Truro doesn't have a dome, and he's like, mm, you can't trust an engine that doesn't have a dome. I mean, <laughs> that gets, is that the same episode where he gets obsessed with breaking like the 100 mile an hour speed? Yes, because that's what City of Churro did. It was the first engine to go over 100, and so Gordon's it, like, well, I could go over 100. <laughs> is that the one that belongs to the to the Duke of Sodor. I, I, there's, is it the Duke of Sodor? I remember like a like a titled uh, like person comes with their own engine, and it's it's meant to be the fastest engine in the world. I, I don't and remember that episode. G- Gordon is very put out. I, I'll look it up and find out what what, 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 what that was. But yeah, I know Gordon that, is yeah. very very put out by that. Yes, the City of Truro one is. Is it does cause quite a bit of a kerfuffle, and obviously G- Duck being a proud, uh, he's got GWR I mean, pride, hasn't he? And you've so got, he's you've got some it. great screenshots of this, which I'll have to share because um, it really gets across the the ignominy, you know. Because Gordon hates, I mean, he hates being brought low. Or <laughs> and look at what, like, there's the city of uh, Truro. Look at the, you know, d- you know the low IQ Douglas there, starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody's starstruck, and then like, look, laughed at by the trucks. Look at Gordon; he's just like brought low by the by this situation. <laughs> Even Gordon being laughed at by the trucks because this other engine's that you know this more famous engine is there. Um, so you know, really, quite a lot of 
depth to the to Gordon's character in this. We're going to have to go over these screenshots properly at some point because we've missed the episode where they go on strike and they, they form a union essentially. And well, then let's the talk fact, about that now because it's, the, the fact again, that well, it's, it's Gordon instigates it, doesn't he? Really, it's quite far back. It's, it's near the beginning. Only the first series had subtitles, which was very annoying. Um, also, oh, go, go wait, wait. You've missed James's midwit face there. James, the, the peak midwit face. Keep going. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> So that's oh, there, there's the vicar. There's, there's the, the vicar, vicar, the base vicar, Ed, Ed, Edward's uh, great friend. Um, but uh, hold on. Oh, there's so... a toast rack. Toast rack. You've missed the toast rack. Uh, what's what's this? Uh... That's the ashes where they get the the cinders in the eyes of the boys who are throwing stones at the. Uh... Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is the episode. Is this the episode where this is, there's a couple? It's spread across a couple of episodes. You need to go back a bit more, I think. And this yeah. is where he acquires Percy, doesn't he? Yeah, well, Percy, the, the, uh, Percy's origin story is, is as a result of uh, this unionization that Gordon... Yes, es- essentially. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... yeah, oh, yeah, okay. James cries as well, because J- James gets uh, banned from working. There's a very sort of Protestant work ethic message about this one, where James pretends to be ill or something, or and then they they put him in the shed, and then he gets sad because he can't <laughs> work, and he starts crying. <laughs> Because uh, work, work in and of itself is moral. Exactly, um, exactly. And that's a good engine, says the fat controller. <laughs> it's reduced into tears. It's reduced into God. tears, and it's like, good, you've learned your lesson. Now get back to work. Okay, so here it is. This is a legend. This is probably like the number one episode. Right? <laughs> that night, the three engines had an indignation meeting. This is so good. <laughs> it's amazing. They basically form a tender engine union and decide to. Oh, I love it. Uh, so, so basically what happens is the fat controller tells Gordon, because Thomas has been given his own branch, now Gordon and the Henry and James have to shunt their own have to shunt their own coaches and trucks. Um and they're like, this will not do at all. And they so they call they call an indignation meeting to get out of shunting, basically. And they're like, right, if he gets a shunting again, we're gonna go on strike. Um, listen, said, <laughs> <laughs> and then we we don't know what he, look, look, at the, look at James disgruntled. Look at James is just not happy, is he? Was Henry's oh. a bit unsure about it? Henry's like, you know, he's like minion number number two, isn't he? After James, and he kind of he wants to like look 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 hard in front of his mates, doesn't he? <laughs> you know, yeah, James. Poor uh, poor Henry being led astray here in in oh. this unionization. Um. Uh, we'll do it tomorrow. So that they decide to go on strike because the fat controller is making them sh- shunt. And, um, <laughs> I mean, the fat controller will look silly. The engine is <laughs> it literally shunt. says they decide to go on strike. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Henry's not going, said Gordon. We won't oh. shunt common tank engines. That was Thomas's job. We are important tender oh, engines. God. And, and what tender engine. The midwittery <laughs> here. You will pull them. <laughs> they the midwittery. <laughs> I love they it. They won't their own coaches. Oh, and this, and this goes right the way through. Like they, even after this, they're very loath to do any form of shunt, shunting work at any point. Yeah. It's always a sore point, isn't it? They it? only do it under sufferance after this episode. After yeah. this sort of they learn their lesson. I mean, it, it, even though James is literally a mixed use engine, I mean like his, yes. his position is made clear. I mean James in particular, he, he really should be doing sh- some shunting. Like he, yeah. he is he really doesn't really belong with the other two because he's obviously much smaller and lower power yeah. classification. Yeah. I mean I, I can almost accept Gordon and Henry not doing it, but yeah, James, come on. <laughs> He is. He's the class. You see, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like the the hierarchy needs James' character because he's always jockeying, isn't he? He's, a, he's like it's, a... it's like they've got their own version of the elitist triangle going on here, and it's like Gordon is the big kid. He's the big kid who's physically larger, and his parents have probably got money. But then James is the smallest one, and so he feels the need to overcompensate by being loud and self-important. And Henry's yeah, I mean, kind of the one who wants to be cool and gets dragged along with it. Exactly. I mean, J- James is a classic beta, you could say. Yes. In this, in this, uh, um, <laughs> tender engines don't shut. Don't shut. <laughs> I mean, has go. anybody ever made a T-shirt 
like merch, you know, it won't Tender surprise me. I want a Tender Engines don't shunt t shirt. <laughs> I'm a Tender Engine, I don't, I don't shunt. Maybe that should be the third. That should that should be the third mug. <laughs> the third, I'd buy that mug. <laughs> Ender engines don't shun. <laughs> Amazing. Um, oh, look at that. Here we go. Union busting. Union busting. Oh, we'll see about that. Oh my we'll god. See about that. Oh my god. We'll That's see about not that. You want to hear from uh, from your boss, is it? Um, so <laughs> engines on my railway, <laughs> as they're told. Damn right they do. <laughs> <laughs> that fat bastard. It took me forever. on my railway to as they told you. It took me forever to finish these episodes because I kept taking so many screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. Here's Edward crossing the picket line. He's crossing the <laughs> he's crossing oh. the tender the picket line and shunting. <laughs> Look at him. I don't mind. I'm I'm doing well. Look at you two. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> smiling, just smiling. <laughs> Edward is the true high Anglican tender engine who doesn't go on strike. And just, he just... <laughs> Look at Henry's face there. Oh, yeah, Edward's that... a scab, as someone pointed out in chat. He's a scab. He's just an actual scab, isn't he? There's smell under his nose, Henry. <laughs> oh, man. They all hiss at me. And now he, yeah, he's complaining because they're all hissing at him. And they're going, scab, 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 basically. <laughs> get, a, get a negative wish. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> they, they say... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I love it. I love it. Oh, oh. man. Oh, and last night they said they had black wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so they started to. Oh my gosh. Um, if you choose to watch. This is where he's, you... he bites Percy. Look at the two minions. Look at Mr. D on the right here with the mustache. Oi! <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. You are shooting above your station time. <laughs> so they. So they bring in. See, the thing is, what's weird about this is that Gordon kind of gets his own way, doesn't he? Like they they go on strike, and then they, he brings in Percy. So in a way, yeah. they don't really learn that. Lesson, I mean, he, he has a so, labor shortage because they've gone on strike. In 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 on the island of Sodor, labor is a seller's market in a way because he's only got so many engines and he's got limited access to more. So Percy is new. Like, is the idea that like he's he's newly built at the works? Uh, it, that's what they seem to imply, but it's a, right. I mean, it's a bit vague. He's, but, he's based on he, an Avon side saddle tank. Yeah, I was going to say he is an older, an older type. Maybe he's rebuilt or something. Yeah, I, I do have a question. I do, I do have a deep philosophical question about where the the sentience of these engines comes from. Uh, this is especially called into question when you see the scrapyard scenes where they're all missing. Well, the that's what I mean. Like with the <laughs> rusting, the it gets quite dark. Corpses of the, of the engines, like what? Well, it's not addressed in a satisfactory. I mean, it's fashion, heavily but... implied that Percy is young, uh, yes. because he's new, whereas Edward is old because he's old. There is mature. one thing that, that does sort of make sense with Percy being young as well, is that um, in real life, industrial locomotives, steam locomotives were built for private industry after they were built for use on the main the main line. So in a way, it makes sense. But if he wanted a new engine, he'd go to an industrial design, not a main line design, which is what Percy is. He's an industrial loco. Right. Right. And that there's something, is that called a paddle engine? Oh, are we going to have to go into the different types of tanks in tank engines? Uh, I, I seem to remember. Yeah, it's a saddle it's tank. tank. It's a saddle, saddle tank, yeah. Saddle, not paddle, Thomas is a side tank. Percy is a saddle tank. Duck is a pannier tank. Um, we, they don't have any well tanks, I don't think. Yeah, whereas obviously the, the big engines are tender, tender engines. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, there were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. So now you've got Percy pulling the express. Is that what happened that day? I don't think it's the express, but he's doing passenger duty, isn't he? Yeah, he's, I think he's... I don't think Percy could pull the express. Yeah, I he mean, couldn't. I think, I think it's, it's it's hinted that that it's very difficult for any of them to pull the express other than Gordon. And then 
they knew the three other engines were having a lesson. <laughs> what was the lesson? The, oh, there you go. <laughs> Miss Wick, Wick will set you free. <laughs> <laughs> They've been shut up for days for being the, me- the whole the message of this episode is basically socialism is bad. Like that's, that's it's, it's yeah. really not very not very subtle, is it? Like look at them. Um, oh look my fuck! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> work oh. is a joy in and of itself. Work it's is such a strong Protestant work. I, I, it, there is. I love the it. whole thing. I love it. Uh, <gasps> It's a kind of Calvinist dream, the whole show. Um, look at her. Henry knew. You see, they've got three different faces there. Gordon's, Gordon's like contemplating, isn't he? Gordon's <laughs> right. Um, um, G- you know, James is j- unhappy. Henry's face is like, yeah. I knew this was a bad idea. Yeah, he knows the true tragedy. The true yeah. tragedy that has happened. <laughs> The oh, poet, a poet, a soul of a poet. He understands deep tragedy. <laughs> I hope you are sorry, he said, and understand that you are not so important <laughs> after all. Oh, the true oh. lesson for all midwits, taught, <laughs> a, taught a by tiny, the natural leader, fat manlet standing on a barrel. <laughs> this is this is um, this is the. Alex Ferguson, you know, keeping David Beckham on the bench. You know, nobody's bigger than the team. Nobody's bigger than the team. No matter how good or how famous you get, I can still leave you off. If, and, if I uh, ever became prime minister, that would be me talking to all the people who are in Quangos. And when once all the Quangos get taken out and all the useless civil servant departments are gone, you're not so important after all. So, uh, so, so there we go. So let's get back to the... Characters, then. That was that was epic. Um, By the way, I, I I looked it up, and the engine that I was referring to belonged to the Duke of the Duke of Boxford, not the Duke of Sodor, the, because the uh, it, it, it's implied that the title Duke of Sodor has gone extinct. But yeah, the Duke and Duchess of Boxford have an engine called Spencer, who is a uh, London and Northeast rail, isn't he? Yeah, he's well, you know, he's based on a Class A four. Uh, LNER class A4. Oh, Spencer's the A4. I was getting confused with the nine. Yeah, the A4 is that's a very posh locomotive. Yes. yes. <laughs> and Gordon is very upset about the, the presence well, well, of Spencer. That's because the A4 was the replacement for engines like Gordon. So he got yeah. he got outdone by you know Mallard was an A4. Ah, if you okay. remember well, Sorry, I was gonna say if you remember AA, you might remember this. Um, Blur had an album called Modern Life is Rubbish, and it had just a painting of Mallard on the front. Just a picture of a steam locomotive with Mallard on. Oh, yeah, that's no, it. I, I remember it. Yeah, I yeah. It. I mean, the 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 steam the steam thing runs through a lot of. I mean, I think that whole generation of um, uh, you know the '60s bands had a thing for the steam engines, didn't they? That whole. I mean, it's probably why Ringo ended up doing. Thomas the Tank, well, right? They were all uh, built. Many of them were built up there. I mean, like I think that the A4 was built in Doncaster, Doncaster right? I, you know, yeah. yeah so, um, I mean, I, I cut on a, on one of the early deepest laws. I did the conservative strains and rock, rock lyrics. Do you remember the Kink song, "The Last of the Steam Power Trains"? Yeah, yeah, the Village Green Preservation Society. Yeah. Ha- I think it has a the steam engine itself has a strong place in the. In the heart of the English, um, I've just put a note here. Despite being pompous and arrogant, Gordon is good-natured at heart. Would you agree with that? My assessment of his character. That, that's definitely where the Clarkson comparison comes in, because Clarkson does a lot of charity work and things like that. Mm. So, and I, he is a good person, at heart, but he is also pompous and arrogant and a bit of an ass. And I, so I think that yeah, that's a, it's a good comparison. Where, whereas, 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 I'm not sure if James is good-natured at heart. Well, that's why he's the worst, and he's the peak midwit. Because he's yeah, not. I don't remember because even in the you know, it's like there, are, the, I remember stories where James, uh, where Gordon, like basically makes friends, or he he does he does things to sort of imply that that his differences with various engines, you know, are sort of smoothed over. I mean, he even talks, he, he even makes friends with the some of the narrow gauge. Like I remember him talking to Sir Handel and such. So I I, I think you're right. I think Gordon is um there is a there is a there is a decency to Gordon. Uh, to be yeah. fair, he does kind of 
fucks her handle over by saying, "If you were, well, well, yeah, couldn't to work. tell, to tell you that, yeah, <laughs> pretend to be, pretend to be ill, pretend to put time to pull a sickie, basically, and it backfires. <laughs> but still, <laughs> but still. <laughs> I mean, one of one of the things I love about Gordon is that his default face is that, basically. Yes. yes. Like Gordon looks like he should have a mustache, but he doesn't. <laughs> he gets a little oh, um... fanfare. He in the, in the early early shows, he gets a little fanfare when they show, when they first show Gordon. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, li- I live for the elitism of Gordon. I tell you. Um, let's uh, let's carry on. Uh, so here's James. Um, oh. <laughs> so. Um, he his main job is on the main line as well. Um, he is kind of the you know, I've been calling him the Richard Hammond uh, Gordon's class. So, uh, he is very much the kind of the kind of bullies number two, isn't he? He's the the uh, how can I say the sidekick, the the little little beater, kind of bobbing up and down. Um, he likes pulling the express at any opportunity. Uh, hey Gordon, look, I can be like you. <laughs> he's got big. Uh, he loves his shiny red paint. He's, you know, he's he's kind of excessively vain about his red paint. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, Sorry, someone in the chat just said James looks a bit like Ruba. <laughs> <laughs> Ruba, I saw that. <laughs> oh, um, that's a terrible know, I, thing to say about James. I, I, I was, um, <laughs> I was reading uh, James's uh, Wikipedia entry. And um, they had this, you know, the, the real life train that that he was modelled on, painted red, like James. And there was some um, kind of, uh, you know, steam train enthusiasts who were appalled at the fact that uh, the train was painted with such a garish livery. Oh, yeah, that that's not actually the real class he's based on it's a southern railway n class and they painted it red and get put a face on it and it triggered a lot of railway enthusiasts when they did that it was like the mid hampton railway or somewhere down south it was yeah, yeah. but then the, but then the company were like yeah but it made a lot of children happy so you know but i just it used to be a big money earner for the preserved lines was thomas stuff it used to make them a lot of money which is you know important I just yeah, they did, they, did, they did that with a, they did with the the, the, the the narrow gauge trains in Wales as well. I remember they put yes. a face on uh, some, some of them. I, I think somewhere there's a picture of a very small time stealer next to um, the locomotive that Peter Sam was painted as Peter Sam with a face oh. on. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere there is a picture of me. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, amazing. I mean, I, I, well, I remember seeing a picture of Reverend Aud- Audrey with um, with uh, one of these with I. Was it was it Scar Lowy or no, yeah? No, it was Peter Sam again. It was a, a was picture it Peter of him. Sam? Okay. Yeah, I saw that picture on on Google Images when I was looking through some some pictures for him. Yeah, I was I was just saying I thought it was funny that James has got such pride in his red paint, and the railway enthusiasts were like, "What a garish livery!" <laughs> the irony. James oh. would be mortified if he if he found out they were calling his red paint garish. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, he. James likes being told he's really useful by the fat controller. I would say, um, I mean, apart from Thomas, nobody likes to be told he's useful more than James, I, I would say. Uh, he likes pulling pranks. He likes feeling superior to others. Uh, I would say more than anyone else, he yeah. likes picking on Percy. Do you think that's fair? I mean, if anybody's going to pick, pick on anyone else, it's usually James. But, um, you know... I would say direct picking on Percy. James is probably responsible more than anyone else. Um, he dislikes being put down in any way. He dislikes shunting or pulling trucks, despite being a mixed engine. Um, and uh, he, he, uh, of all of the trains who have deep prejudice against diesels, I would say it runs deepest in James, and James keeps it going longer than anyone else as well. No, Don- Donald and Douglas have the, the most anti-diesel hatred. Oh, they, no, in fact, yeah. in fact, that's true. Donald and Douglas hate diesels as well. They do. They're just like, they really don't like... <laughs> I remember an episode where, like, <laughs> it struck me how strange it was. It was always like, two <laughs> two races. Uh, it was, it was um, who's the narrow gauge engine, the Scot- Scottish? Is it, is it is it Gordon? Who's the what? Sorry, 
the narrow gauge engine that that is got oh Duncan it. Duncan the one that's Duncan, always derailing. Duncan the, yeah. the rock and roll one yeah so I remember there's, a, there's, there's like an episode where they're making a station with James and 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 and, and Duncan are like like basically sort of trading race, racist <laughs> insults about diesels. <laughs> 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 about smelly, they were talking about. He was talking about rusty, and just like talking about smelly diesels. <laughs> smelly, yeah. They, they, they. There are some. There's some. There's some harsh words thrown at rusty and some of the other diesels. Yeah, so J- yeah. James is a virulent racist. It's well. like Don- Donald and Douglas just want Sodor to remain pure and be a pure steam ethno state, essentially. Whereas Thomas and <laughs> other people are a bit more moderate, and they're like the good diesels are allowed in. You know, we'll keep yeah. most of them out, but we'll keep a few of them in. It's like th- it's like the base diesel. We'll let them in, but most of them we've got to keep them out. Most no, of them we I, keep I, out. But like Boko and, and Rusty, yeah, they're all I, right. I see James being hostile to Boko and Daisy as well. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, who isn't hostile to Daisy, really? Yeah, Daisy deserves yeah, it. Da- Daisy is just purely immoral. I, I've it's said that uh, James is an excessively vain and status-seeking engine who perhaps more than anyone else is responsible for maintaining the hierarchy of the social order mainly through the fact that he buys into it more than anyone else. Uh, I mean, if James didn't exist, there's an argument to say... My argument is that the likes of Edward and Duck and their no kind of no-nonsense, you know, that would end up overriding a lot of Gordon stuff if James didn't exist. But the fact that James exists kind of creates... Uh, He's a almost like he's, he's gatekeeping, aura. isn't he? He's gatekeeping mm. in a weird way. Yeah, but that made me think, right? So as much as you dislike him, Time Stealer, it made me wonder if, you need, if you're going to have a kind of social order, if you actually do need a character like James to maintain it. Um, I was thinking of uh, like Faulty Towers in a strange way. So the fact that Basil cares so much in Faulty Towers about um, nobility and that sort of thing, yeah. in a way, is the thing that keeps it in place. Um, it, it, does that make sense? Like, it, yeah, you're basically saying that you need that 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 person who would, in a film, would be played by Alan Rickman. Well, not anymore because he's dead. But you know, James would be played by Alan Rickman. You need that person who's going to be despised and yet fulfills a necessary role in society. Like that person is all, almost always going to be despised and yet they are necessary to maintain you the social almost order. Need a, you almost need a social climber in order to give the social order its its sense of importance, if that makes any sense. Yes. It's so you irritating. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so, but aside from that, does James have any... Like, I'm trying to remember any episode where James has a kind of redemption arc like where he 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 at the end shows a soft side or he he sort of has uh, so, sort of uh, humility or, like it, does he have any redeeming features i think there's, did, a, there's a story where he less on, usually doesn't he yeah usually he does and then he forgets it by the next episode yeah, like, he forgets <laughs> it. <laughs> the other thing i will say about james is that as michael angelus goes on basically he he just starts shouting all of James's lines for some reason. So like when you get to like series five, everything James says is like, oh, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he, he for some reason, he really up, to, sh- he to really shout up, everything that James says. It's very he weird. really upped the Karen levels on James when they changed the <laughs> narrator. <laughs> he really went full Karen then. There's, yeah. there's, a, there's a fantastic screenshot which has got a great James face that you've taken here, which I have to share. With the audience, this is uh, this is where <laughs> Diesel is winding them all up. There's Diesel. Look at James's face. <laughs> no, I think that's the disgusting, disgraceful, despicable moment where they're saying engines shouldn't interact socially with trucks. That's basically what they're saying, and they're disgusted at the idea of interacting with the scum. And then... <laughs> <laughs> what, I mean, what I like about there is that is that that is the pure face of prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> The most virulent racist. (laughs) James has the best stink face of all of the engines. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Henry's Henry's got a good face going there as well. He's permanently disgruntled, is James. Like he's his default, <laughs> his default state is that you know. Well, that's because he is the ultimate middle class person. In that he 
always resents the natural aristocracy who were above him, and yet he looks down on the plebeians below him because secretly he's afraid of going back down to their level. That's the it's just middle class people in a nutshell. Like he's yeah, that, he, that's well, why he he's, is, you're right. He is the pure middle. But I guess what I'm saying is, you need like if you didn't have that, would the order be able to maintain itself? Because he's the one who gives the he's the one who kind of maintains it in my view so um anyway let's move on here we uh, go um, so here's percy uh his main job is supporting the other engines uh which involves doing goods mail uh thomas's line shunting general dog's body work i mean basically about 80 percent of all of the work on sword is done by percy as far as i can make out um uh you know i at least 65% of the economy of Solo is based on work that Percy <laughs> does. Um, he likes causing mischief. He likes playing jokes. He likes telling stories. He likes being silly. He dislikes being bullied too much. Although he'll take a certain amount, but if it goes too far, he doesn't like it. He dislikes not being believed, even when he's lying, which is a bit strange. Um, he dislikes anything too scary. Um, I very much dislike uh, some of those Percy centers stories because they're a bit um they're a bit oh. kind of childish for my tastes uh, well he is the the youngest and he is the sort of the it's almost like he is the character that children watching it can relate to the most yeah yeah you know when he when, there's that one with the dragon and he gets scared and you know yeah and i will say triple a seemed to like that episode quite a lot so you know um uh, percy is uh quite childlike in many ways he's cheeky and naive but ultimately he's nice and kind very hard working Thomas's best friend and an all round good egg. I like I like how you're still pretending that you're watching news with AAA rather than just hiding from I, hiding AAA from Mrs. AAA. Triple A didn't watch a single one. <laughs> <laughs> Sat there at four in the morning hiding from Mrs. AA in, in, in your garage watching Thomas the Tank Engine. Percy. Uh, also, um, I, I will say that I, my fa- one of my favorite screenshots is the blushing Percy after I that, love woman, that. that woman kissed him. <laughs> you remember that? I love like he, that. He saved someone's wedding and then he got kissed by the bride and he <laughs> it's amazing blush. <laughs> Didn't someone on Twitter say that's what Mr. D actually looks like in real yes, life? Yes, <laughs> Sa- Saffron, Saffron tweeted that out and said this is what I IRL. <laughs> He's got like a little, uh, like a little turban on his funnel as well, because it's the wedding, isn't it? He's got like yes. a little. Uh... <laughs> He's got a little. <laughs> God. Oh. I mean, he's. Um, it took me a while to like Percy because I thought, you know, I I do think some of those Percy centered episodes are a bit shite, but um, he he is like the beating heart of the island. Um, after he's brought in. Because he does most of the work. I mean, it's, most of the work we actually see done is done by Percy. It, uh, uh, talking trains and faces aside, it is a bit unrealistic that he's going out on the main line or even a branch line and pulling anything because yeah, his, his wheels are so small and he's got such a short wheelbase that he'd be really useless going over anything beyond about 10 miles an hour. So he's... He well, he, really he quite... should be rocking. He should be rock and rolling like uh, like Duncan. Exactly. Uh, I think uh, that was also a case of having a very short wheelbase. Uh, Precisely. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a few episodes. I mean, there's that episode where the lorries come in and they make a point of like really hammering Percy for being small and like. Oh. Well, the tall. thing is, is that small engines are very useful in certain settings, like. Where you've got very tight curves, or very, you know, in an industrial or on a dock or in a factory, you can get around these very tight curves and into these smaller areas that an, a bigger engine can't. So they are they are useful. It's just you <laughs> my know. brother, my brother saying Percy's such a wanker is that a bit unfair? <laughs> That's a bit harsh. I like oh. Percy. I, I'm a, I'm a bit of a Percy fan. I have a soft spot for Percy. Yeah, I like Percy. I don't know to think about Percy having a small funnel. It's, it's, I mean, it's a I, I would say that now that I come back to it, he is the he is the Luigi, isn't he, to the Mario of Thomas? Now that I think of it, no, he kind of is. Yeah, I. To, Percy's honest and hardworking, and mm. I, I just I respect that. You know, I, yeah, and, I and he's in a lot of Halloween episodes. Yeah. <laughs> he's like like Luigi's haunt. 
Luigi's Haunted Mansion games. Yeah, he, he Percy gets sh- gets pushed into the spooky spooky episodes. Um, it, he also structurally plays a very important role in the show, which is that because he's brought in a, a lot about the the workings of the island through Percy's eyes, because yes. it gives the other characters an excuse to teach a lesson, and. Um, I feel like after Percy has become a veteran, the producers of the show start like thinking, oh shit, what are we going to do now? And they have to keep on introducing more and more characters because Percy's like run out of, you know, run out of story, if that makes any sense. So Percy's become an old, an old hand and they need, they need someone yeah. new. Um, Cause I mean, I, I can't remember who it is who, who comes in. Is it Oliver? Oliver. It's, yeah. It's like Percy's telling Oliver lessons. No. Yeah, Oliver was in the books as well, though, to be fair. But I think once they'd run out of source material, then they really upped the ante in terms of introducing and coming up with new characters to just rinse and repeat that whole... Was there a toy, like a Hornby line or like a toy tie-in? Because um, I remember from uh, Heat, like, I just like He-Man as, as well, um, which is, uh, again, you know, uh, different uh, context, but... Um, it, He-Man was secretly run by Mattel, the yes. toy company. Yes. Yeah, and, um, that show was designed to sell toys. Like, like half of the <laughs> the later eighties cartoons, pretty much like, all of them were designed. Designed, to sell toys. Like, yeah. the uh, Return of the Jedi. Like everything in the mid eighties was designed to sell toys. But, but I, I found out that like half the characters who were introduced into He-Man, like season two or whatever, were brought in almost entirely because there was a toy to push. And I'm wondering whether by like season five, there was somebody leaning on the producer saying, listen, we need a new model to come in here. Let's uh, come on. It's got to be a new train you can introduce. Um, was any of that stuff stuff going on or, or is that even later like the CG? Or- there, there was um, a line of like die cast toys i had loads of those when i was a kid and i think there was possibly some element of that um of i i don't really i don't really know about the the the, the cg era stuff i just remember the, the the one with the models but and there was a, there was some hornby had the license to produce like oo gauge um models as well so that that was but they generally tended to do the the familiar ones or do ones based on locomotives that they had models in the main range, so they could literally just change the color and put a face on. I mean, uh, um, yeah. Any, any more comments about Percy before we move on? I think we've kind of uh, kind of covered Percy. He's, I would say he's one of the beating hearts of the show, um, just purely through his work rate. Really, um, I mean, I would say he does more work than Thomas in the end. Tom Thomas really gets away with just shunting out Annie and Clarabel up and down his branch line. Like after a while, Thomas isn't even in it that much. Um, well, no, because there's only there's only so many stories about about Thomas in in the original source material, and he wasn't even in the very first book. Uh, and they had to kind of almost write some more stories to insert Thomas in there, really. To be honest, uh, so yeah, I mean, to- a lot. Lots of the episodes are not as Thomas centric as you'd imagine, um, and for a while, I would say Percy almost—I mean, I wouldn't say he's the main character, but that he's of, he's involved in a lot of different things, just purely through being around. You know, if there were yeah. the dot, Percy's down there. Um, he's the one character who seems to go everywhere. So uh, then we have Toby. Um, now Toby uh, is a what do they call it a tram engine what's, what's this style of engine uh, yeah he's a, a tram steam, if you look in the steam tram right if you look in the other folder i sent with the the references he's the one that, that it says real life prototypes he's the one that most closely resembles i would say the actual real life engine it's based on of i suppose duck and oliver do as well but yeah they were they were trams and they were built to work the um little lines in east anglia um, in, on the fens and stuff, which would often cross roads or run alongside roads, and they'd go through field, agricultural fields where there weren't any fences or anything, and that's what they were built for. And so they're quite specialised uh, 
Yeah. All right. So, so this is a this is a real life Toby. Yeah, there he is. Uh, I think what, the what? Reverend Audrey saw them when he was on holiday in East Anglia, and was like, "Hmm, that'd be a good idea for a character." <laughs> well, while we're at it, we might as well look at the ones we've we've you know we might as well look at Thomas. Yeah, it's London Brighton and South Coast Railway E two, I think. Yeah. Then there's Edward. Edward's a bit vague because he's supposed to be one of those, but he doesn't really look like. The fir- that mm. furnace railway one, and it looks yeah. more like this this one over here, really. To be honest, yeah, um, so that looks like an old Victorian engine. Um, then we had Henry. I've just put a black five on there because I'm not even sure. Like like Mister D said, it was almost a bit of a weird prototype. Yeah, him. that's what he was rebuilt as. And then we had who's number four, Gordon. A one. There you go. Flash and then uh, we have James. Yeah, James is funny because they he's got the driving wheels at the front. He's got two um what's called a uh, like a pony truck at the front. But that's supposedly what he's supposed to he's like Shrine Yorkshire Railway. Um one and that's what he's supposed to be based on, but yeah, not all the, really. All the descriptions say that they they add that. Yeah. Fender thing. The, that's a purely goods locomotive. Mm. It's one of my favourites. <clears throat> have you have you have you delved into what was it called? Wheatley notation. Uh, AA. <laughs> is that the tri- Is that the wheels? The wheels. Yeah, thing? that's the like, like, zero zero yeah. two zero. Yeah, yeah. Zero oh four oh. Yeah. Oh four oh. Oh, there's uh, there's duck. Is that Doc? No, oh, nice. next to him, yeah. There's a pannier tank next to that, actually. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, the one on the left there. Six, and then we saw Toby. So yeah, we can go back. We can go back now. That's as far as we got. Um, all right. So, um, Toby's main job is supporting Thomas on the branch line. He does specialist work involving trucks and goods, um, and that specialist stuff is hammered on a lot, actually, in the in the series. Uh, he's notable for his age and experience. The the other engines often say he's forgotten more about trucks than you will ever know. Um, he you're, not, to... you're not sharing the slide, by the way. Eh? Just oh, all right. Oh, sorry. There you go. Um, yeah, just in case you can see it now. Uh, he's notable for his age experience. Forgotten more about trucks than you'll ever know. He likes perfectionism. This is often a plot point, actually, that he's. He's kind of fussy and fastidious, isn't he? Um, it's very particular. This winds up Daisy, among others. Um, he's got a he's got a coach called Henrietta, and he has uh, excessive health and safety standards, um, <laughs> uh, which are, again w- uh, winds up lazy Daisy. Um, he dislikes being put in uncertain situations. He dislikes going on the main line. On which he's too slow, and uh, he just likes running out of water, which is uh, the plot point of at least one episode where he has to make it to a tank before he runs out of water, and then he's stuck on the line, and somebody has to shunt him. I seem to remember. So yeah, he doesn't really have much water capacity, as you can imagine, from looking mm. at him. So yes, he gets stuck on them. I think that that one involves James actually he gets stuck or something. Something like that. So, uh, so there you we go. Have to say where, where, do you remember to say where there's like a the the, the 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 police constable changes and then the new police constable oh. is like <sighs> overzealous and like like he's just a bastard and he's well, yeah, like he has, he has Thomas arrested, doesn't he? Yeah, he basically tries to like pull over Thomas and he writes in yeah. his notebook like serial habitual offender or something in his notebook because yes, he's not got yes. he's not got cow catchers on that's why they get toby because they, they meet... get toby because he's got a cow catcher in the, yeah and he's then, got the side wheel cover the, the, you get cuts to the fat controller having having toast of his toast from his toast rack and his butler comes <laughs> in because he's got a butler because i think i've got some screen cra- grabs of this one he's got a butler because of course he does and he's yeah. like the butler's like someone's on a telephone so and he's just bother that telephone <laughs> Oh. I mean, he tries, he tries <laughs> arguing thing? with the policeman, and not even the heroic will of the fat controller can change the mind of this policeman. And, and, and it's just a, a line where it says the fat controller was exhausted. <laughs> Let me see if I can find those. Uh, 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 it's curious because the police have very little 
very little role in Sodor, it seems. Well, that's like, because you, there's very little crime. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're sort of like relegated to, you know, the, the Britain of old, you know, they're just on the, the bicycles and just very rarely intervene. It's the Bobby. Bobby on the beach, I mean, yeah. The island of Sodor is uh, kind of Britain as Peter Hitchens would have it, really, isn't it? Hitchens yeah. would love the island of Sodor. It's also never a mention of military, of, of, of any sort of military thing, as far as I, I can tell, in in Sodor as well. Yeah, that's true. Actually, no, no, there's no soldiers, there's no sailors, there's not no military anything at all. Yeah, which is odd. that might come from its origin of just being after the Second World War, and people were probably a bit sick of that after. Mm. Possibly, well, I'm not, yeah, I've ne- I, I've never noticed that until now. I'm trying to, I'm racking my brains, trying to think if yeah, I was. Trying to, I was trying to think of something to disprove. Just through my my theory that there, that there just isn't any reference to it, but I I don't think there is. So the the engine know. that Duncan was based on came from an, an RAF base actually, but in the show he comes from a factory or something. So they they obviously he obviously changed that. I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to uh, not. So, have... Oh God! Here we go. Here's a bit oh. of Toby. Um, there he is. He gets uh, yeah. Um... That's one episode where that happens. Uh, milk van. Oh, and now we're getting into. The, oh, we can't go on to the, get onto this part yet. We got to oh, some spicy funny. moments. Bulgy, <laughs> bulgy, bulgy. We oh, need to smudger, talk about smudge. No. We, we need to talk right. about the bulgy episode when we get to Oliver because that episode is so reactionary. It defies belief. Talk about like, dog. <laughs> it's smudger as well. Oh no. Yeah. All right. Let's, 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 anything to say about Toby, um, other than the fact that he's a bit of an old fuddy duddy who help works on the works on the goods line. He's just he's just reliable and he's based and he's a specialist and he 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 puts Mavis in her place, which is ironic because Mavis is the exact same type of locomotive that replaced these steam trams in East Anglia on those lines. They were replaced by little shunters of cow catchers, but he just puts her in her place and. Fop patrols are basically so. Mavis, <laughs> step so, over Mavis. Now <laughs> exactly. We, now we have Duck. Um, oh, Duck used to I, be my favourite as a kid. Now he he mainly works on the Arlsberg branch line. He's also not adverse to doing like, yard work, unlike unlike um, unlike the big engines. You know, Duck will just get stuck in. Uh, he likes the fact that he's a great re- Western railway. Um, you know, he's still got his GWR heritage, talks about it a lot. Sometimes he winds up the other engines by going on about it a bit too much. Um, and I do, you've got the real life prototype here, which I'll, I'll just share. Uh, we're going to have to pick up the pace soon. Uh, here's the real life. Uh, yep. There he is. Looks very much like yep. duck. Um, and I mean, I learned that they brought Duck back into the into the modern show, and it's led to um, complaints from the modern community that there's too much fan service with Duck now, <laughs> uh, which is a bit of an odd complaint um, that they're inserting Duck into stories where he's got nothing to say, really. It's Duck is a popular there. character because people like Great Western, uh, you know. Yeah. That's 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 the popularity. Yeah. Um, like I said before, it, he's proud of his heritage and culture. That's why he's got GWR still. So. Uh, is, 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 great, is, is is his reference to the Great Western Railway? Is that is that like the only reference to like a real life uh, in a sort of heritage railway in the show? Um. Flying Scotsman is mentioned. Yeah, well. Flying uh, Scotsman and yeah, yeah, Churro yeah. are in are in there. That's Churro, Churro, yeah, is, right. is a great Western one, and they do they do mention like Fingy um, Gordon being built at Doncaster and stuff like that. Okay, so. all right. T- doesn't Thomas come from Brighton or something? I yeah, he's at London and Brighton South Coast Railway. Yeah. Um. Anyway, all of the engines dislike diesel, but Duck really dislikes diesel. I would say that Duck, like diesel, is almost like a nemesis to Duck. I mean, uh, diesel is just pure, just subversion and disgusting uh, lefty. Uh, you you had a lot of pretty good screenshots of the duck diesel beef. So I'm yes, there's, yeah, yeah. There's, there's 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 a line where he says, 
well, as you say, we we diesels don't need to learn. We know everything. We come to a yard and improve it. We are revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> subtle, I, I, very subtle. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can find uh, some of these some of these diesel duck beef screenshots. Um, but one of the things I wanted to say about duck is that he is like an alternative morality in the show. So there's the there's the threesome of Gordon, Henry, and James, which is one kind of social order. Duck is very independent, isn't he? He's very kind of stands on his own, doesn't take any nonsense. Um, and because of this independence and no nonsenseness, I would say Duck is in, in a strange way um, like a pillar of strength for some other engines around, like. I can imagine in a quiet moment, Edward may maybe uh, go into Duck to confide in him or something. You know, just be just because he stands apart from the the kind of bully gang, if that makes any sense. Uh, that, yeah, that's because of his great Western heritage. You know, that he has this sort of uh, pride that comes from having this long, very long history of, of coming from this realm. I'm trying to think of a good example. He just comes. He's having. He has more of a connection to something you know something else and that he's maintained unlike the other engines you know he's not fully gone native fully because he still has pride in his gwr roots i guess yeah i can imagine like i don't know like if i don't know if, if they've been picking on percy say percy could go to duck for you know moral support for example um, yes so, so that here's where duck comes in that controller brings him in um got the number eight but he maintains his gwr number on the other side i believe precisely um, and then uh you know, there's percy like being cussed out by the um and then there's diesel absolute scumbag that he is exactly um, look at the dishonest face on diesel yeah, <laughs> dishonest, the, the dishonest, dishonest face. face dishonest chin uh, yeah oh. look at the nose Dude, look at the um, nose on and then what what happened does he basically spread rumors yeah he he, he goes to the trucks and he he converses with the trucks and goes amongst the the, the scum which the other uh. engines wouldn't do and he he talks with them and he spreads rumors and he says that duck told them all these things and so gordon That's james right. and henry the midwits fall for this and they think duck's been talking you know shit about them when actually it's diesel all along who's subverting everything yeah what a bad what a nasty piece of work diesel is Setting yeah up duck. absolute scum duck trying to and, make a name for himself and in, in the end i think the fat controller is wise to to the skeptic to, to what actually happened like he it sort of implied that he didn't actually believe uh that the duck's perfidy you know that, it, that he knew it was diesel all, yes. all along yes yeah. I've just and got then, the trucks in there because I just it, love the trucks because they're just the portrayal of them is fantastic. They're just absolute scumbags. What a, what a what a great shot this is! Look. Yeah, look, uh, the diesel absolute. Fat. You don't even need the subtitles. <laughs> Duck is just fuming here as as to what as to what diesel has uh, diesel has done because I mean let's face it if you were starting to work for the Fat Controller, you need to win these guys over, right? To to I mean, whatever you think of them, to get on in that workplace, you need the, these three guys on board. Yeah. And so for Diesel to undermine undermine Duck coming in is pretty nasty to think about. Like, because it's it's made Duck's journey to being like a accepted member of that team much more difficult now. Yeah. And so you can see why it's uh, why it's annoyed him so much. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And there you go. Um, it, this is basically the fact controller telling them off about uh, spreading lies about duck, basically. So, uh, so is this the episode where the where the trucks sing that song about diesel? Yeah, that's oh, that was the episode before this. Pop goes the diesel. Ah, yeah, pop What's goes the diesel. Here? Uh, he breaks. He gets chased by those runaway trucks, doesn't oh, yes. he? And then he goes through the barber shop, and the barber puts the... shaving cream on his face. <laughs> shaving foam on his face. 
And then he, and then he, and then he's corrected by the fat controller and told that uh, that it was a hero, and so he washes it off. <laughs> There's a bit of a semi-persistent theme in in this show, whereby trains break into like buildings, and the people inside yes. the buildings are not distressed by the fact that there's a train inside. They're more distressed yeah. by the fact that their routine has been disturbed. It is <laughs> it's a giant steam engine just burst into them. Uh, Alright, so, so we can probably pick up the pace a little bit now after we... I mean, those are the main engines. Um, we've got Donald and Douglas. Um, one oh, thing I want to say before, before we get into these, Ringo Starr Scottish accent is appalling. Oh. Absolutely it is bad. Yeah. Um, it it doesn't even come close to being Scottish. Um, it, obviously, Anglis is more of a kind of voiceover pro, I guess. So his Scottish accent is better. Um, anyway, these guys are brought in and they basically do dogs' body work. Um, they support Ducks Line, as far as I can tell. Um, they like Scotland. They yep. like challenging work environment. <laughs> uh, you know, if it. <laughs> They can do like work in the snow, work in the cold, you know, work on the quarry. It doesn't matter. They can do it. Um, yep. They like the occasional joke or the prank. They dislike diesels of any kind. As we've discussed, they, they're really prejudiced against the diesels. Um, they are based in Scottish pill, Donald and Douglas. They just, they, they, don't, they don't care, do they? They'll just, <laughs> they, yeah. They don't have airs and graces about them like some of the other engines. They just get on with it. They dislike being parted. In fact, I think Fat Controller originally only buys one, and then he kind of yeah. ends up getting the other one in anyway. Yeah, he he was yes. meant to choose just one of one of them, and in fact, they didn't have names. And he gave them he gave them numbers at the beginning, uh, and he was going to just choose one. Uh, but I can't remember what happened that he he ended up keeping them both. There's some shenanigans involving swapping tenders. Mm. And then there's that episode where they just completely destroy that brake van. The spiteful brake van just gets oh yes, gets yes, wrecked. Yes. It's it's completely that well. wrecked. They, they just destroy them, and you see them just lifting the face up with a crane. <laughs> with a cra- yeah, that is a very dark moment where the the, the face is just being all it's the so, way. So dark. I mean, that's worse than. Do you remember the truck called Scruffy? Oh, Scruffy. Yeah, the private Scruffy. owner truck, and he just gets he, wrecked by Oliver. He gets he gets wrecked, but like he gets rebuilt. Built, but like that yeah. brake van, there's no there's no hope for that. You just you just have no idea where he's being. He's going to that brake van. He's just oh. yeah, oh, he's quite dark. And now I would say that these are very useful ac- acquisitions for the fat controller because until these guys turn up, really, um, Percy, as I mentioned, does like all the work. But it seems like Donald and Douglas are called on whenever any kind of shit job needs doing these guys turn up and um, they're pretty much like good, good eggs. You know, they carry on working in the background. Um, they seem to be less picky in what they're willing to do to me. No job is too dirty for Donald and Douglas. Which uh, actually mirrors the real life railway. It was sort of 060 tender engines were very ubiquitous and uh, you can kind of get them to do pretty much ever, anything other than express passenger they taxes, also don't so. complain about their snow plows unlike uh thomas like thomas that, yeah others yeah yeah so they they just kind of get on with it they're always willing to have a bit of a joke and but i would they're, they're kind of background like they're kind of backgroundy as well though i would say uh there's not many donald and douglas centric stories that i can think of um i remember donald crashes at one point um i don't know if that was what you guys were just talking yes. about Pretty much everyone uh, crashes at some point. Every, everyone fair. crashes at some point. I was going to say, uh, I also, I, uh, Sodor has a lot of rail accidents, I would say. Like, yeah, more suspiciously. Than prob- them, but... More than probably it should. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's carry on. Um, so that, then there's Oliver, who's a kind of a late comer to the line. Uh, he mm. joins Duck's line. He, uh, he's kind of got a big nose. Um <laughs> One thing to notice. Um, I, it's, an, it's a oh, bit of a uh-oh, bonus nose. Uh-oh. Yeah. He likes being brave. <laughs> no. His coaches are Isabel and D- Dulce. Uh, and Toad the Break Van comes with him. It's weird how Oliver has a lot of characters attached to him, isn't it? Um, yeah. Like, Toad is like the one sort of wagon that's actually okay. Yeah. 
He's the actually alright. He's, he's the only decent of like your van or truck. Or yeah, anything. he's he's alright. Actually, he's old toad. Yeah. Uh, Oliver dislikes the prospect of being scrapped, and he's got a kind of an interesting character arc because he comes in, he does this break, you know, he's kind of a hero, but then he gets bigged up by Gordon and James and so on, and so it goes to his head. Yeah, he's prone to overconfidence, and to, you know, to be fair, I mean. He he does have some good reason to be, you know, considered somewhat of a badass because he he basically survives the genocidal death camp on the mainland. So, you know, that, <laughs> he, I mean, but no, when you think oh, about yeah, it, oh yeah, he he was he was he was about to be melted down. Was it? It was yeah, about, he was about, about to be scrapped because the, de- the all yeah. the steam locomotives are being scrapped and they're basically being killed off, and oh, all the diesels are replacing them. And he's there, and he's next, and the you know the the and Donald, it's either Donald or Douglas helps they help him escape and uh, get get to the uh, the, uh, the 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 ethno state on the there, board, There's some we? very there's some very disturbing concentration camp vibes well, to, the, that... to the to the to the smelting of works with that particular... especially with the de- especially with the two diesels who like sidle up and, like... The, the particular story about oliver that actually genuinely was inspired by reverend audrey talking to holocaust survivors i'm not even oh. kidding he, 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 that's where I, that's how we ended up writing that story and it's even more explicit in the story where like friendly signalmen help them hide from the diesels uh, hunting oh them and God. all this sort of stuff it's, it gets very dark <laughs> it gets very dark yeah so uh anything else about oliver (laughs) (laughs) no 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 not i think that's it really he him and him and duck have that run in with bulgy don't they which as i've said is is peak reactionary children's fiction right there why do we the talk? Let me see if I can find those. Uh, we we need to talk. We need to talk about Bulgy before. Yeah, let's. Before we uh, yeah, we need to talk. We, we, need, we need to talk about Bulgy. We need to talk about Bulgy because that is possibly apart from the one where they go on strike. That is one of the most reactionary stories in the entire yeah. thing. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Um, it's a good story. It's, it is one of the better episodes, actually. Um, <sighs> Uh, I mean, we could talk about which is. I love the one where they where they go on strike. I like Diesel episode. The pretty Diesel's good. very reactionary as well. Um, yeah. I mean, I kind of like the one where Henry gets uh, going the wall. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah, I like that. I personally like that one. Also, did you, did you never notice that, that Diesel his light motif is sort of like vaguely oriental? Like he he kind of has a yes. His music is slightly kind of. Yeah, yeah I Middle got a, Eastern, Middle Eastern, yeah, I got a yeah, Middle Eastern Arabic, kind of yeah. Ar- Arabic yeah. vibe from yeah. him. Kind of a... Which, of course, is 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 fitting because he's a sort of petrol, like you know, diesel. He'd be running on petro- a petroleum product. Yes. So he... let's talk a bit, bit about this bulgy story. So <laughs> bulgy. he he um he is the he's this double decker. Who has this agen- anti-rail agenda? Free the rails. Oh, oh, I'm just going to say. I'm just going to say one thing right now. Uh-oh. Bus lives matter. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, no, 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 no. Not going to say it. Not going to say it. They bring in so so Bulgy has got this idea that he is going to be taking away the business of the railways, uh, which is outmoded, and they're all going to be scrapped basically. I mean, he puts Percy down. He puts everybody down. Um, he's going to take over their all their businesses. He, he pretends he's... to be a railway boss. Yeah, he's got. He kind of <laughs> runs a rogue service. <laughs> a fake railway boss. He, he actually says, "Join the anti-rail league on the side." Yes, what he originally had the on there. <laughs> well, he gets his comeuppance because he he takes this illegal route, tries to take this shortcut. Yes, and gets stuck under this, under this bridge here, and then duck. <laughs> um, I mean, have you got the? Have you got? Yeah. The, You've not got the one. He, he goes over the bridge. Yeah, yeah duck goes over the bridge and then mutters to himself to shore the bridge up. <laughs> yeah, but people are like, "Oh, you know, Bulgy's under there," and Duck is like, "Yeah, deserves it. Deserves it. Like, basically, <laughs> deserves it." <laughs> <laughs> which uh, which is pretty base from Duck, I, I think. 
Um, and then he gets to live the rest of his days as a chicken coop. Yes, he gets turned into like a hen house. <laughs> I turned into a hen I house. Love I, I love that picture. <laughs> I, I like covered in sh- chicken shit. Yeah. And I like that he's like sat there, like at the edge, like so he can see the shame. Like he's a, he's literally <laughs> for eternity gets to sit in that yard and look at the bridge where he had his fatal crash and look at the trains and just be, and be a sentient. <laughs> but this is the, I mean, talk about reactionary kind of fantasy porn here for, from uh, <laughs> Reverend Audrey. I mean, <laughs> this is like, you know, the forces of modernity crushed. By can death, I, can I just read this, the, the lines he has in the book? Because I got this yeah. out specially because it is, it is like the least subtle thing I've ever seen in a book ever. So this is when he's got, this is just for context. This is when roads are taking over from railways. And the road, the railways are losing, and they're being shut down. And the trains are being scrapped. And he's there with joined the anti-rail league. He says, "Pa," snorted the bus. Enjoyment's all your engines live for. Taking the petrol from tanks of us workers. Come the revolution, he went on fiercely. Railways will be ripped up. Cars and coaches, I'll trample their remains. Free the roads, he growled. Free the roads from railway tyranny. Oh <laughs> bus lives matter. That's amazing. <laughs> Oh. oh, really? There's a number amazing. of these, and then there's a number of these characters. Also, uh, is it Oliver the 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 steam roller thing? Is his name? Oh Oliver? no, yeah, I I remember that. It's George, I think George. Oh, George, yeah. Like he even yeah. has a little song about you know, like <laughs> you know, get rid of the trains, get rid of the trains. You know, there's a number of these these anti rail uh, agitators. George, yeah. This is what I'm saying. Like the show is, you know, whichever way you've paint it it's deeply reactionary it's deeply kind of uh romantic and anti-modern and pro-trad even though that traditionalism is rooted in the industrial revolution yeah. it's still kind of like <laughs> it's, it, it is though isn't it it's like yeah. deliberately anti anti-progress in a way and all of the engines understand the existential threat posed by the likes of bulgy and george the steamroller yeah. I just um, I just want to say that Coney in the chat chat is asking about Harold and Harold is accepted because as discussed earlier he plays a very special and important role on Sodor. Well, well I mean speaking of Harold here we are with the non railway vehicles. Well, they, they uh, don't really like Harold. I mean they, there's a lot of uh, reluctance about Harold I would say. I mean Edward is very skeptical of Harold. I think he says at one point you know we don't need to there are mutterings of like don't need no silly helicopters and so on but he is grudgingly accepted i would say harold um and he's aristocratic isn't he harold yes. he's he's kind of snooty um uh, but these are the kind of main non railway vehicles you've got bertie who's a, who unlike bulgy is a friendly right is a friendly bus and he has this rivalry with thomas where they race each other once in a while. Um, you've got Trevor, who um, jo- uh, Mr. D said was the Shinobi Yaka of the, <laughs> of the Thomas and Friends world. He's like the <laughs> yeah, he really is. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he, he was also rescued from scrap as well. You know, he was also a rusted old Hulk. Uh, what a what tragic place that was. Trevor was found in. That's one of the more haunting, poignant yeah. moments where they go and find Trevor. Yeah, um, and uh, you know, and he's just yeah. happy to, you know, he's just happy to have some use and and to, and, to, and help the help the kids. So there's Trevor giving children a ride in the vicar's orchard. I mean, that's all he wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> gets a second, gets another lease of life. He just um, wanted uh, to have a nice retirement, didn't he? And just, you know, yeah. chill out oh, in the one, one thing about Bulgy, though, I, I, I would say Bulgy is brought back to life later on. Do you remember he becomes, he becomes like a mobile vet, like vegetable, like, Truck, uh, vegetable, who, like who bulgy, bul- bulgy, yeah, bulgy. I don't is, remember that. Yeah, bulgy, bulgy. It becomes like a green. He becomes the the. He becomes like a a mobile like you know van that sells veg. Uh, uh, <laughs> and and there's a, there's a story where he, he he he's like he's like renovate. 
he's like renovated. The fat controller like has him has him has him renovated. But like all the chi- all the chickens get all the chickens sneak back into him, and then they cause like a huge havoc, uh, going mental and then spreading feathers all over the passengers at some point. So he gets turned into a in yeah he d- gets it... turned into a vegetable. <laughs> so... Wow. Amazing. I mean, talk about. I mean, I talk called it revenge fantasy porn, uh, <laughs> reactionary <laughs> fantasy porn, but um, it's really, it's really dark. I mean, oh. um, then we have the the narrow gauge engines. Oh, uh, best. Most of series five is devoted to these characters. There's Duke, who I don't think Duke actually makes it to Sodor. He's just this kind of mythical figure. No, his, his 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 story does take place on Sodor. There's a different narrow gauge line, but closed down. There's two narrow yeah. gauge lines yeah, and one no, closed down. What, what what I'm saying is is that it takes place in the mythical past, whereas these guys, Peter Say and Sir Handel, they end up interacting with Thomas and friends, whereas Duke is long gone. Like you, I don't think Duke makes it into the modern kind of timeline, does he? Unless I missed it. There is one shot uh, in one of the episodes where you see Duke in the sheds with with Peter Sam and, and and all the others, like in the modern day. But I I don't think Duke has any stories past the Grand Puff uh, the Grand Puff episode. Um, so not that it's, I recall. It's told in a strange. It's told in a very different order to the books, where you the Duke thing kind of comes in later, and they they. Um, like Peter Sam and Sir Handel talk about him, and then they go and find him. But this is after all the narrow gauge stuff with the other engines has been established, ah, and okay. so it's a bit it's a bit weird the way they do it in the show. It's a bit yeah, confusing the, as well because yeah, yeah. they've they got the different Duke story to introduce all that. Yeah, they've got different names though. Like, yeah, Peter Duke, Sam or, or like yeah. Falcon and Stuart, I think. Yes, yeah, Something Falcon like and Stuart. So, yeah. Um, anything else to say about the narrow gauge engines? It's Wales. You're obligated to like it. It, it is Wales. Yes, it's definitely Wales. And I, I like all of these these stories. You know, like um, yeah, like like Duncan and uh, Scar Lowy and, and Rusty and yeah, and 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 not to mention the dark story of Smudger, which I saw you had oh, a screenshot. God. In the wanna, uh, wanna... I, I, that was the, that was the only screenshot that I took from that season because eventually I was like, okay, I've got enough. But that <laughs> in the books, he's very American as well. He's described Smudger. as American, ah, yeah, and, okay. and it says in, in, back in the he goes in the states. We don't mind the odd, the odd, the odd um, derailment, and then Duke's like, "Yeah, well, we do over here, you fucking yank." <laughs> he gets made into a solitary, <laughs> into a stationary boiler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In this show, I, I don't know if you watched that one, eh? But yeah, there's a very dark. So like, Smudger basically is like derails all the time, and so like he's he's basically turned into a generating a generator. And like Duke is, it's, it's something like Duke is talking to Stuart and Falcon, and he says, "Yeah," and he's still there behind the sh- behind the shed, you know, to this day, you know, just like like a cent, <laughs> like a, and he'll and he'll never run again, he'll never move again, you know, he's like a sentient boiler engine. It's, it's quite dark. It's re- you just see his no, face. I, I, his I, face. I, I did see that. I did see that, but I was. Uh, oh. I think that episode was on when I was trying to make wheat bix in the kitchen. Uh, God, <laughs> yeah, that's a, another yeah. very dark moment, I think. Um, so, that, so then we have. We need um, to get onto the, the, the DQ now, don't we? The yeah, diesel well, question. Now we have the Uh-oh. diesels. Uh, Uh-oh. Now there is Diesel, who is a top tier villain, I would say. Yes. Absolute scumbag. Um, Fratern, you know, fraternizes with the trucks, which is. He's the worst. Uh, um, he's slimy. He's very subversive. He's, uh, uh, I would yeah. say some top uh, voice work from Ringo when uh, Diesel. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, yeah Ringo in. does that weird voice for him. Yeah. Uh, did you notice, by the way, that Ringo sings more in season two? Like he, you know. It, yeah. There's a lot. He of comes Ringo's, out of his shell a bit. Yeah. Um, he seems to ramp up the, and then Anglis somehow like dials it back when he when he comes in. Um, because there's less singing and tomfoolery in, in yeah. series three. <laughs> the Diesels. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then there's Boko. Boko. 
uh, kind of a weird character, and then there's very Daisy. rarely seen. As, as far as Boko's interesting because the, the the real engine he's based on, they were not a very successful type, and they were scrapped very early on. And so it's kind of like almost they he's kind of like a bit of a relic himself in a weird way. Uh. Now, what, what's the deal with? Um... Because there's, a, I mean, I, you've got quite a few Daisy shots here, which I'll... Uh, yeah. Well, this is up. just Daisy being a thought, and then she's just... I mean, I, I get a sneaking suspicion that the Reverend Audrey and Mr. D might agree on women being a mistake. Like, it, it's very... <laughs> it does come out a bit in that episode yes. where she's just being... Look at the absolute state on Daisy. I mean, it's difficult to get an honest day's work out of Daisy, I would say. It really yeah, I mean, is. And, 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 like, all of her stories, like, the, the few that she has, she basically... She she volunteers for things that she can't do that she's basically not qualified doesn't have the ability to do and then she fails and and, and then the mess has to be cleaned up and she just she, she just makes that yeah. stink face you know not That's willing like... to take instruction from Toby uh, what's what's her line she says I'm highly sprung and pulling is bad for my swords <laughs> like, and then she, has, as we've discussed already she has the the fucking Weimar Republic burlesque theme tune which is very <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like it's really weird. The stripping music. It's re- what is, I don't know what they were trying to say there. Well, I have a suspicion what they were trying to say. Oh. <laughs> she is, and then she does ultimately get thought patrolled by the fat controller, who completely puts her in her place and yeah. you know gets a hard day's work out of her. Not easy. Yeah, I'm very skeptical of female engines. She yeah. she tries to um she tries to cut corners with the trucks. And uh, comes a cropper, doesn't she? Um, when she does yeah. Toby, I think she had been a, a, you know, as so many of them do, you know, falling into a pond with some rocks, etc. Um, <laughs> well, uh, let's, let's move on. Um, there's Bill and Ben, who are so, technically Sodor China Clay Company employees. Um, and now, other than being put in their place by Edward, is there anything to say about these two? Because they're, they're kind of background minions as far as I'm concerned. The real engines they're based on are very close to these and actually really interesting. They they worked in the China Clay branch in Cornwall. And uh, he, he must have seen those at some point and decided to sort of make his own versions. But yeah, they, they don't really do much other than play tricks on on people and yeah, be interesting. They're, 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 they're quite the jakers. Uh... Uh, as uh, every time they're seen, basically they, they yeah they do lots of m- mischief. Yes. Uh, yeah. Then we have the uh, disgusting scumbag <laughs> trucks. <laughs> trucks. I, could talk, I could talk about the trucks all day. It's just the <laughs> they really are the most spiteful oh, creatures. God. I mean, I, I... there should not be truck rights. <laughs> there shouldn't. If anybody tries to start agitating for like humanitarian aid for trucks, or you know, trucks should have the same vote as you, no, no. I, th- some of these trucks have a bit of a soy face going on. To be honest, they have a bit of a soy grin, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> I, d- I love that they gave them like the most dysgenic looking faces. <laughs> And, and it's a, it's such a as I, as I mentioned earlier, it's just hilarious that that basically. All they want to do is break free and die. Like they, they always, they like every storyline. They it's just like they cause trouble, they break free, and they crash, and they're splintered into a million. <laughs> yeah, oh, God, a, they are the worst. That's a scum. And then, and then, I mean, look at, it's look like, at their when faces. I was when I was watching it. Like, I, I, if I would see like a potential for a good truck screenshot, I take one, regardless of whether it was relevant to the actual story. I'd just be like, "That's a good truck screenshot." <laughs> it's a good truck. <laughs> I mean, just to give you an idea of the dysgenics, um, dysgenic trucks we've got. I mean, state of these. <laughs> Look at the spike. Yeah. Look at that. Look at the yeah. state. Of that. <laughs> Dis- dishonest nose. Uh, Toast rack. Yeah. See if you've got any more truck shots. Oh, there's Henry's. There's Henry's forest. Henry's forest. Yeah. 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 Um, oh. yeah. There's Thomas Mavis. Being... We didn't mention Mavis, did we? She. Uh, she gets. She gets uh. put in a place by Toby. Yeah. Look. Mavis. More, she she more, talks uh... to the trucks. You see, and that's where she's gone wrong. She talks to the trucks and. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. 
you know, thinking she can trust the trucks. Exactly. You can't trust the trucks. You can't. <laughs> Look, even if you think you can trust him, he will trick you. Yes. It's fact, in his nature. Even the, even the fat controller is aware that the trucks are just, like, miserable scum. Also, like, it, I just want to say that the, the, the milk tanks are in there for Harry and because he likes to simp for milk trucks. So oh, let's see. That's, that's, that's why they're in there. I'm just trying to see if there's any more, uh, <laughs> any more truck shots here. Oh, look. Oh. Look. Look at there the, we go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they should not be given the vote under any circumstances. No, uh, no. Um, oh, there's the break, uh, there's, there's the... There's... Oh, the face, the face being all the way. <laughs> there's the minions. Oh, look at the state on that. <laughs> So, uh, oh, look, look, look at them. Look at their <laughs> sick. Look. <laughs> and even the narrow gauge trucks are scum as well. <laughs> James's midwit face. Yeah, I watched an episode the other day where they're on that slate incline. And you know where the the loaded ones go down, and they pull up the empty ones, yeah, and then they just break yeah. free, and they all die. They all just they all just yeah, kill themselves. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that was one of the more spectacular crashes. I think they crash yeah. into Peter's into Peter Sam's face, and then and like the the sluice like breaks, and water it's like <laughs> sp- flows out of all over everything. Yeah, they just oh, die. The state of them. Um, all right, and then finally, unless we've got anything more to say about drugs. Who are uh, you know rightly treated as uh, nothing but scum? Um, I mean, it's amazing that there is no, there is no, re- there is no good truck like other than that. Toad. Br- apart from Toad, there is no truck. Well, Toad, that, Toad that isn't is, a truck. He's, he's a he's a brake. He's a brake van. Break, break there's not much. There's not much between a truck and a brake van, really, in in real no. terms. You know. There's... Um, oh. But yeah, I mean, you can never, you can't trust a truck. Uh, that their will is to destruction. Uh, you know, <laughs> they just want to watch the world burn, don't they? If really? you they entrust your city, si- if you entrust a city to the trucks, they will destroy it. <laughs> uh, and the, then the, tru- uh, the trucks always vote Democrat. <laughs> oh yeah, always, <laughs> always vote Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a union they haven't joined. No. There's not diesel they haven't no. listened to. <laughs> Uh, I mean, like I said, they're, they're not even they're, they're not even working class. <laughs> they're, they're like they're, no, they're, they're not. They're blatantly not. No, Percy and Donald they, and they, engines they, like that. They're the working yeah, class. The, tr- no, the, the, the trucks are just. Oh, uh, I, I, I would I would dispute this. Cr- cranky isn't really a villain. Yeah, yeah. I not. I kind of felt bad for putting Cranky in the villain category, but he, he is a miserable sod. He's, like he's, even yeah. even after even after his kind of story where like you know he can't sleep and then he gets to sleep but he's still a miserable sod even after that. He's, he's like a bit me. of a he's a bit of a frenemy character, you know. In, yeah. that he start, he's, yeah. he's 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 he, he, they know he's a bit of a knob, but he's 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 all right, really, isn't he? Ultimately, he he's helps, just he helps out a few times, but but he also like randomly will like drop heavy industrial loads just just like like nearly killing like workmen and nearly crushing engines like it's a little dark a little dark mm. yeah what, what is it that he says to the he speaks down to the engines doesn't he what does he say to them he's got like some killer hello, line bugs. yeah hello, hello bugs yeah hello bugs, bugs. <laughs> bugs. <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a bit strange because um there are trains that don't have faces and there are tr- um, sorry, yeah. there are cranes that there are mm. cranes that don't have faces. Yeah, yet, and there are there, there are automobiles that don't have faces. Well, let's get back to that philosophical question: like, why does what? Where does their sentience come from? Like, like you know, what is the nature of it? Well, how do they die? Like, well, well yeah, I, I am... it's, it's it's also worth pointing out. Going back to my little um, hierarchy diagram earlier. Most of the carriages are, are female. In fact, pretty much all of them are female, and a lot of them don't even have faces. <laughs> they just, they're just, fa- they're just faceless and unrepresented. <laughs> they're just, they're just fa- <laughs> yeah, only a few of the, only a few of the carriages have faces. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have to say, I, one of the only things that bugs me is I don't like um, 
Clarabelle and Annie and, and a few of the other characters. I don't like their faces because their eyes are like literally like, looks like someone scribbled the color on with like a crayon and just in, 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 like a, on a piece of paper and just just like pasted it on there. They're very low effort eyes on on the on the coaches. I would say. Yeah. So um, let's just. Uh... Let us. I mean, I would say the coaches are are, are a step above the, the trucks, though, aren't they? The yeah. oh, of course. That's, are, well, on, I put yeah. that in the diagram that you know, the coaches, yeah. even the lowest, because it, it's his Anglican leanings coming out. Even the lowest female is is always going to be above the, the ultimate trucks. scum man, you the know, scum. because. <laughs> Are all, the are all the coaches female? They are all female, Almost all of they? them. I, don't, I think that, that old slow coach might be male, but pretty much all of them are female. Oh, yes, yeah, slow coach. Right? And that was the Reverend Audrey did that on purpose because, you know, he said that women should follow behind the men. So <laughs> it, it, it makes sense. So so we must uh, hit the super chats now, lads, because uh, I'm running out of time, sadly. Um, Coney uh, says, out of all the engines in the first two series... Edward is the nicest engine, always supportive and never vindictive or teasing. Henry has the most character development after being bricked in. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say Henry, Henry after that early kind of punishment is less nasty. Edward is by f Edward is almost too nice. He has no, he's almost boring because he's so nice. I would say, um, as we mm. as we discussed, these are the entropy uh, chats. By the way, people who can uh, send super chats, you can go into entropy, which is being monopolized by uh, the likes of Coney at the moment. Uh, Coney also says uh, Thomas is the hardest working and has an excellent working relationship with his lady carriages. No risk of getting me too by Annie and Clarabelle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Thomas is very very hard working, almost like the ideal employee. Um, but I would say there, Edward is very hardworking. Toby is hardworking. Percy is very hardworking uh, as is duck. Yes. So, I mean, there are a lot of pretty hard workers there. Um, the slouches or the people who are always trying to get out of work are, are the main three engines. I mean, there are stories where Gordon's just like fancies a day off. Oh, I'm sick of pulling the express. This, uh, I mean, we didn't talk about that. There are days where Gordon's like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to chill out in the yard for a day, you know? I'm sick of pulling the express. Wake up, lazy bones. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of weird, though, isn't it? Um, so, uh, yeah, it's mainly the, uh, you know, the three amigos oh. who who uh, slack off. Um, I, I didn't, I, didn't I tell you this at the beginning of the stream, pretty much? <laughs> that they're, they're responsible for a great many of the issues on the railway. Mm. Those three. like yeah. it's like you know eighty percent of the issues are caused by twenty percent of the, but then they take they take all the credit as well. Yes, which is kind of weird. Um, Coney says I like whistles and sneezes episode where a few boys throw stones at Henry's coach window from a bridge. Instead of getting the police involved, Henry sneezes on them, yep. covering them in soot. <laughs> yes, and uh, you 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 got the we we briefly saw a clip of that in uh, Time Stealers photos. Um, I kind of like those uh, boys' faces sooted up. Um, yes. so, that, so moving to the um, moving to the uh, main super chats, Sensor Duck has just uh, has just sent a super chat saying, "Train supremacy." <laughs> yes, indeed, over the trucks uh, every day of the week. Um, Owen says, "AA is the Jim Cornette of Thomas the Tank." <laughs> Uh, Jim Cornette is a kind of re reactionary wrestling commentator who <laughs> yeah. always goes on about how the old the old wrestling was better than the current wrestling, uh, which is true. Um, so so yeah, um, Tony says, "Why is the music so good?" Yeah, the music is excellent. It is uh, fantastic. I can't believe yeah. they changed the theme tune. Uh, that's I mean, just, oh, oh, did they? Oh, god. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's on. Honestly, as bad as you imagine the CG stuff is, the few clips of it I've seen are just I can't worse. I can't bring myself. They're to worse watch than it. you could imagine. Um, I didn't even I couldn't watch it. I, I couldn't can't. Like... No. Owen says the high law was the best law artist. Wink. So um Oh, I'm saying that, that was referencing the old school, art. the old school deepest law. I mean, yeah. I don't know if people still bother doing a uh, deeper since I stopped sharing it. 
I think the incentive. I, I, I do miss the occasional law review because I did enjoy the law reviews. And it, it took up a lot of time though, didn't it? <laughs> That's the problem. Mm. Just have it, having a look. Somebody, somebody called not the BBC has just added me to their list called Rebuilding the West. On Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, Space Cat Boy says, "Can we keep in mind that the only female?" <laughs> What? what? <laughs> Just like username is amusing. Um, yeah, Space Cat Boy has says, "Can we keep in mind that the only female ENF the Rev ever wrote was Daisy, a lazy vain diesel, who coerced Toby and Percy into doing her oh, work." Yep, beautiful. If you notice, no one simps for Daisy in any of the episodes. Well, the, I, I would say one of the things I greatly appreciate about. Um, Thomas and friends is that the lack of any romantic, like there is no, not even a hint of any kind of romantic, uh, you know, other than other than Percy blushing when he was kissed Actually, by that bride. If you exclude the engines, the fat controller and his wife, they they, they do have a few romantic moments. But the, the well, train, I mean, I mean, I know, I mean, amongst the, I mean, amongst the, the you know, yeah. the, the, I mean, the, then the, that, the that brings into question certain other questions about. Train romance that we shan't get into. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Also, uh, the Fat Controller is a—he's—he a, has like grandchildren. Yes, they—they—they they, they do sort of. As, he, he, they they appear in an episode. In fact, I think that's the episode where Toby is introduced. Yes, like, yeah, he's he also, on holiday. He also yeah. brings his mother in at one point. Yes. Oh yeah, Miss yes, Mrs. 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 Yeah. Hat. Yeah. Mrs. and he says his mother is always right, which is you know interesting. Yeah. Mm. Coventry three hundred one says Thomas the Tank Engine equals my childhood. You see, and that's why he's watching me, right? It, it, I mean, I, that's why. Uh, I, I bet yeah. you uh, an unreal amount of uh, my audience will have, you know. Already... I mean, there's, there's there's a lot of people in the chat who have very deep knowledge on this subject. I've been keeping yeah. an eye on it, so yeah, it does not surprise me to be honest. Oh woof woof. <laughs> I, oh, I, yeah. I, I, just, I, I was I wanted to mention that I forgot. <laughs> um Coney says I have a signed copy of one of the railway series. I'm jealous. Nice. Alex Masters says, I'll watch this later as I'm currently in the workshop drilling out rivets on a steam roller's boiler. You can follow Excellent. our progress on Facebook by following the Roby Trust. So uh there we go, the oh, Roby nice. Trust. Nice. Uh, that uh, sounds cool. I'll just have a little uh, look at that. That's what that's what real men should be doing. Exactly. Riveting things. Oh, this looks pretty. Look at this. So Make, share it. Making things. Yeah, let's have a look. Okay. So let's have a little look. Oh, hold on a second, though. Is it going to... Uh, I can't share it. I just realized something. I, I tell uh, you what. Oh, stupid Facebook. Okay. I can oh. I'll, I can share this now. I'll share this. There you go. There's a there's a screenshot Fantastic. from. Yeah, I don't know if that is the super chatter, but there's a proper oh, bit of uh, working man, nice. proper working man there. Uh, what, what do you think of that, Quentin Crisp? <laughs> Jeff, <I'm joking. laughs> no, no, I'm not taking the bait. I'm not taking uh... the bait. Um, but yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, Cody says the fat AA. Well, that's certainly true. <laughs> uh, uh, Dennis uh, Z says AA for long term memory, search super memo archives for intervals of repetition and optimal sleep patterns and info on human genius slash creativity. I kept his blogs to myself for 10 years to get a mental edge. So that's the Super Memo Archives. Uh, maybe I'll check that out for memory tips. Um, yeah. Uh, clearly, by the way, on the memory tests, the um, learning by rote works because loads of people like days later are still giving me that list. Yeah, I um, could I think I could still do it. I I made one inversion um, to after ten minutes, but yeah. yeah. Whereas um, I don't, I'm not sure if the memory palace has been as effective. I I'm not sure. So, somebody did say I didn't do it properly, but you know, mm. shut shut up. Uh, you have to Ixel ask you says, about that. Um, Ixon, Ixel Doran says, um, 
Edward is the FC fave. Ed is too old to do his job, but FC protects him from the other engines. It's why FC moves him out of the main sheds. So, um, yeah, the fat controller's got a soft spot for Edward, basically. So he he keeps him on, despite the fact he's he's pretty useless. Is that true, do you reckon? He sort of goes into like retirement a little bit, doesn't he? Semi-retirement. Does he, though? He runs his own branch. I, I know, but it's like it's a bit more of a, a, quiet, a quiet backwater away from, you know, the hustle and bustle, isn't it, a bit, really? You know? He's... Go and take those passengers next to the orchard, uh, Edward. It's a really important job. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how much of the Fat Controller's um, business is basically just a make-work scheme for his favourite scene? Well, you, you do wonder. You do, you do wonder <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Utis4321 says, good parents have the young boys read Thomas the Tank. Great parents have their boys memorize the Iliad where they grow out of Thomas the Tank. <laughs> God. Tocconi says, thoughts on Shed 17? If you haven't seen, it's one of the most disturbing things ever posted on YouTube. A horror parody of Shed of uh, Thomas the Tank. He's mentioned no, that I... a few times. I might have to watch this because... Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it. I've only seen my own my own parody trailer. I I I, I will I will um uh, I have a thing where I I don't like I mean, there's certain things that I just think are too pure, and I think there is something deeply immoral about kind of besmirching various things with even that you know even good natured parody like it just it just feels slightly wrong. Mm. To me, you know, uh, I mean, I, 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 I maybe my conservative bent, but I, I just, uh, yeah. So I, I'll probably avoid that one. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I uh, massively dislike mainstream internet culture these days. Uh, uh, um, to to an unusual extent, um, and uh, just just looking at my initial uh, search result on YouTube. There are reaction videos to the Shed 17, which means it's obviously far too mainstream for me to. <laughs> God. Um, I mean, I mean, when I say there's reaction videos, you know, Zoomers in hoodies reacting oh, to Shed God. 17. It sounds awful, isn't it? Oh. Um, Hunger says, you forgot to put the entropy link in chat. Love the age of the trucks video. The trucks are immoral because they cry out in pain as they strike you. Uh, no, I mean, I, I would say that um, if, if anybody is uh, crying out in pain as they strike you, it would be the diesels. Um, yeah. Whereas the trucks are just kind of, you know, they could be used as a tool in the uh, plans of a, of a diesel. Yeah, I mean, the um, trucks aren't even, they're not even, they're not even sentient enough to be venal. They're, they're just like, they're literally just, just they, reactive scum. Yeah. They are just incredibly low IQ, aren't they? Yeah, they really yeah. are. Um, Tragic Vision said, who is the Luigi of Sodor? I think we discussed that. Yeah. I think Percy is the final answer there. Um, uh, the new IKB says, Edward is a skilled worker who knows more than the managers and possibly the natural elites. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's... Mm, um, yeah. Ed Ed Edward is a Edward is like that, I would say. He's, um, you know, he's got a natural a natural authority about him. Um, you know, I'm trying to think. Like, if anybody ever read that book uh, of mice and men, um, you know, there's the, the cowboy with the spokes in the in the. You know, he's got all the bells and whistles and the shiny boots, and then there's the the old ranch hand been there and done it, and you know he's quiet. But and Edward's a bit like that, I suppose. Um, Coney says uh, Thomas the Tank was my obsession when I was four and five. Uh, yeah, excellent. Uh, excellent. Again, probably why he watches this channel. Mm -hmm. Hollow nineteen sixteen says, despite being thirteen percent of the Sodor crew, diesel trains instigate fifty percent of train accidents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this diesel about. is diesel is such a scumbag. Um, a, you forgot to do a physiognomy check for each of the trains. Uh, <laughs> well, we kind of did a little bit, didn't we? We did. Yeah, we we did, we, we did get into it eventually. I think. Um, Coney says, Top Gear, Deepest Law, when? I'm a big Top Gear fan. 
Uh, I'm not sure about. Uh, is there Top Gear law though? Um, not really. Just you just the. Ep- I, I mean, mean I do a little bit, but as someone who's, n- I have never watched a single episode of Top Gear, and I, I would say that's a very mainstream uh, franchise. I, I think you should steer away from that, eh? Yeah, it's not probably. It's probably not one for deepest Laura. Hunger says. Uh, the this entire series is just a catalog for my future children's entertainment, a steady diet of Thomas the Tank Engine, Muppets, Enid Blyton, and World War One propaganda. <laughs> uh, yeah, very I good, mean, very good. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of like so you know the deep rooted reactionary elements in the culture. Uh, I mean, leftists don't like Roald Dahl, um, so that's something I might explore at some point. Um, you know, there's some. You know, Wonka. Wonka is quite a sinister kind of old school morality tale in some ways, which I might uh, might think about. Uh, Hussars V says, "Virgin Snoke versus Chad Sir Topham Hat." Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jedi Knight Anakin Cringe Walker says, "Imagine all the naughty engines, uh, Reg the Scrapyard Crane has heard bed beg for mercy before he recycled them." Do you think he feels anything anymore? <laughs> <laughs> That's so dark, uh, Green Walker. <laughs> um, Benjamin Shergarworth is just a uh, super chatted choo choo. Uh, Starscream1540 says, AA, is there any hope you will make a socialist trucks video series showing the rise of diesel and the collapse of Sodor? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> that, that little trailer on AA Gold is all you're getting, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> You don't uh, want to. Gr- you don't want to delve too deep down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Well, see, this is why I'm a dilettante. You yeah. know, if I was a true geek, I would spend the rest of my life concentrating on Thomas. In which but, is totally possible. But because I'm such a dilettante, it will just be this week and next week. I'll have moved on to some other thing. Uh, uh, flitting from topic to topic like a exactly dilettantism. Uh. Although this deep dive is deeper than ninety eight percent of people would do. So, you know, it's kind of a dilettante geek. I can tell you have very much enjoyed this particular uh, little past couple of weeks deep dive into Thomas. I, I, <laughs> the amount of Twitter activity is <laughs> just alone. Yeah. I mean, my, my favourite part is, like, I've, I've literally seen a few people who follow me on Twitter, like, change their avatar to, like, yes. Thomas-related to Thomas-related <laughs> things. Um, uh, Grumpy Limey says, reactionary fantasy porn, AA, three hours well spent, worth every <laughs> cent. Five, five uh, bucks, says Grumpy Limey. Um, EC90 says, biodiesel Leninism. <laughs> yeah, I mean, de- that's what's happened in society. Is society listened to diesel too much, basically. Um, and there's even let, like, these days you'd have... Um, You'd have to have a, a truck on the bloody board of directors. Yeah, um, and a sol- and sol- a solar engine, engine solar panels or something. The it's green time engines. to grow. It's time to grow and learn. Says if we ever gain power together, we need to transform one of our British Isles into a steam engine Isle of Sodor. Indoor restore the steam engine beauty in order to restore the steam engine beauty. Absolutely. Uh, um, you could invite people as a kind of living museum. Uh, Jedi Knight Anakin Cringe Walker says, "Please Google Thomas the Flamethrower." <laughs> uh, Thomas the Flamethrower. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm not keen on this. Uh, yeah, they've people have put uh, people made a Thomas the Tank Engine with the flamethrower on it, on it on it. As far as I can see. Oh, uh, um, degenerate cringe walker. Come on. Um, a heretical Lutheran, of course. On it, 2 3 me <laughs> says, AA, I think you've reached peak wank with this stream. <laughs> Au contraire. <laughs> you ain't this seen is, nothing. <laughs> this is peak riding the tiger, I would say. Mm, very good. Yeah, this is peak riding the tiger. I, I guarantee this stream would be heavily approved. I bet, I bet in my head canon he was mates with Topham Hat. They used to like go on holiday to each other's houses. And... Yeah, but it, you see, what we're doing is we're teasing out the reactionary strains in the culture. But this is like for you know many people's childhoods. Um, so there, we, there we go. 
it's kind of like well, how can you count for you know and the, those leftists who are onto it you know you have to head them off at the pass and maintain the aspects of the culture that you want to maintain you know show your kids thomas the tank and get them tank well, i've got my killed. my railway series books and i fully intend to uh keep hold of them so yeah show it to my children it's someone's just... calling me the original duke of deep Dive. i am the lord <laughs> high duke of deep dives uh um sam petra says i always wanted a russian civil war era arm and trade on when i learned of them as a child their character would be the lazy strong man undoubtedly and um coney says there's a thomas the tank engine skyrim mod yes there is what i really want is a thomas the tank engine management game where you play as the fat controller and you can you know, try to make T Gordon do shunting and see him get upset. It's surprising how that's never been made, really. I still don't think it has been. Yeah, I, I feel like um, the owners of the Thomas the Tank Engine franchise don't really understand what they have. That's my impression. Whoever owns that franchise doesn't understand why people like it. That was my I impression. Think, from... I think it's actually owned by Mattel now. No, I, I mean, Mattel are idiots, aren't they? They they have they they are responsible for so much uh, so much bad stuff in culture uh, and ruining many many things. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it could be worse. I mean, the, the the franchise could have been purchased by Disney. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's unfortunate. I mean, ironically, there's another reactionary character who we could do a deep dive on one day, which is actual Walt Disney. Yes. You know, and then look at what they turned in his creation well, into. Well, that's what happens. You know, uh, anything that isn't, you know, it has to be consciously, you know, tended by a great figure like that, or else it will just slip into darkness. I mean, all of the, these, pro all these properties look at, do. Look at, what, look at, look at what's happening in Tolkien. Have you have you seen? Yeah. Or look you at know, the um, like... look at the Ford Foundation, right? The Ford Foundation. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I mean. I, I just uh, give you a very quick uh, look of what the Ford Foundation looks like. Is this what Henry Ford would have wanted? I mean, is this what oh he? Oh my god! Is this what yeah. he stood for? I'm sure that's exactly what he wanted. Also, <laughs> speaking of Tolkien, Lord of the Rings deep dive. When I'd be down for that one. I, I there's some very uh, based themes in Lord of the Rings. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Ugh. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. This, this, I mean, you, you literally have Aragorn, who is the, the ubermensch of the superior bloodline, returning to save, yeah, well, I mean, I, save I the West. Them, I watched them all recently, so yeah, I, I, I would be up for doing uh, Tom Lord of the Rings at some point. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, deep dive on Thomas the Tank. We've gone on longer than we usually do, but now I have to go to uh, relieve Mrs. AA and... Uh, Maybe I'll watch more Thomas the Tank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, very quickly, Time Stealer, anything to shell, sir? No, no, I don't have a YouTube channel or anything. I'm just uh, a long-time viewer who saw his opening to contribute and share the uh, the tank engine pills. And D, anything you want to shell? I'm going to poop, poop at Henry. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and yes... Um, you uh you can um you can uh, buy a buy a course if uh if that's uh you know something that you you want to do and uh, I've just been told I didn't even ask for it AA Gold now has channel memberships <laughs> why I didn't ask for that uh all right fine yeah um, when is when's more car gonna have channel membership that's the oh question. well more car's not even close to being monetized yet so, uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> Um, yes. All right. I'm going to have to go get out everyone. Thanks for, uh, you know, thank you everyone for sending, uh, for sending Coney. You're a very useful super chatter. <laughs> All right. Get out everyone.